What's up, buddy? Oh, nothing. I know, right? I know. I'm I'm excited about the episode tonight. Yeah. So our guest, uh, I don't know, got logged out or something for a minute. So yeah. we're still gonna run our mouth. We got we're some shit to talk back on. But, a little uh, housekeeping. Yeah. So uh, CQ, pop culture warrior. He's friends of the show. Yep. Um, CQ, pop culture warrior. He's actually gonna be back on with us in a few weeks or so. So. Um, then also the Two Brothers Podcast with Troy and Trevor. Yep. And then uh, Trevor ha- uh, Troy has the No Tea Lounge, and Trevor has the Trevor Jackson Podcast as well. Hey, we got the other one. Fuck yeah. Yeah, Redneck News Entertainment and the Redneck Review Podcast. They were on us with us a few weeks ago. We had yep. a pretty good time. Well, we're, we're on with them Friday. We're going to be on with them this coming Friday. Yep. So uh, look for that. Uh, we've got T-shirts, and we got some stickers. I don't have one in front of me. And then... Uh, the Andy Harris um, impersonator extraordinaire on Twitter. Oh, yeah. He's Winner of Guest of the Year for 2020. Yeah, right? Yeah. I, I feel like uh, our guest tonight might win Guest I, of the Year. It very well could. Yeah, very maybe. well could. Maybe. So we're, we're, um, we're putting a lot of stock in this. Like, all, all my all my horses are in the apple cart. So while I open tonight's drink, oh, uh, we, you want to go we, ahead. What are we drinking tonight, though? Oh, I was going to let you talk about next week's oh, okay. guest while I get this So uh, next open. week's guest um, that we have coming on is a, <laughs> oddly enough, a clean comedian. Uh, his name is Sean Eli. He's based out of uh, New York. Not a York. clean person, though. Not a clean, not that I know of. So uh, we'll see how that goes. We might have our first walk off. <laughs> but um, yeah. Oh, just a disclaimer: um, as people join, um, and also for people to listen later, this is a very not safe for work podcast. Yes. So if you have kids, and you know uh, you're a fan of of Jay's. Oh, we have Jay Nielsen, by the way. I'll bring him in just a second. But if you're a fan of uh, Force and Fire, and you have family watching or kids. I would not let them. I mean, if you do, you're either a fucking <laughs> awesome parent or a really shitty parent. It could go well, either way. Well, as Ben Fold said at the concert I went to, he's like, this is a vulgar show. If you choose to keep your kids in here now, that means you're a bad parent. I'm still a good artist. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So, hey, uh, we got Jay Nielsen tonight, man. Welcome to the show. How are you? Oh, hold, you know what? Oh, my bad. I completely muted. Did you mute him? There Way we go. go. Now, he, now he's unmuted. Way to go. Sorry about the super professional here. <laughs> can you hear me now? We oh, can. yeah. Yeah, I had you muted. It was my fault. So, no, uh, no sweat. No sweat. What are you drinking tonight, Jay? Uh, well, I got some Prop 12. Okay. All right. I'm going to crack that open now. All and right. Join you, fellas. Nice. So we're drinking Slain Irish whiskey, triple cask. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole yeah, thing. Please don't. But uh, well, you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> Inspired by no, I'm just just kidding. So Slain, Gabe's got it. I've got it. Uh, Steven's got it. So yep. here, here we go. Let me get the housekeeping out Ooh, of the way. That's good. <laughs> I'm loving that. <laughs> All right. So Knoxville, cheers, Tennessee. Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville, yes, Tennessee. Sir, yeah. Knoxville, Tennessee. Cheers. Sweet. Cheers, guys. Not bad. So before we can dig into it for next week, oh yeah, our alcohol. And I got this because I was thinking, you know what? I feel like you've been bitchy this week, <laughs> <laughs> so I got you a little bitch whiskey for you to look forward okay. to a week. I got some fucking Jim oh, Beam I, Apple. It, that's gonna bother you more than it's gonna bother. I don't like it, but it's I, gonna bother think, you way more think, than it'll bother I me. I think we'll suffer equally. Uh, you think so? Yes, okay. I do. It's better than that it's dumbass <laughs> absinthe. You- I, th- I thought he was going to pull out a box of Tampax or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's Dip, for clean up later. In, dipped in fireball. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, well, man. thank you for taking the time yes. to be with us tonight. Are you your busy, uh, busy guy? No, oh, no. It's cool, man. It, it's, it's good to hang out and chat for a while. A little, little you know, download. Yeah. 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 We're always down for... <laughs> For, for loads, <laughs> Down, some downloads, yeah. Oh Jesus! Oh yeah. So, um, my wife's not Joe? here right now. So, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. So you you had you want to kick things off? You've got a, a laundry list of questions. You said uh, compared to you, who never prepares for anything. I know, I right? Know. I prepared. But, so um, I, I guess I wanted to kick off and kind of get the yeah. forged and fire shit out of the way because I know people are going to be. You know, tuning right. in for, for that if you're if you're good with that. Dude, I've been answering questions about Forge of Fire for six years now. Right. <laughs> so used to it. It's crazy. Yeah, and I will see so if we ask something that's just redundant, just be like, hey guys, just fucking reference this interview because I'm not talking uh, just, about just, just, just fire away. It's okay. I'm I'm oh, used just, to it. Like just I want said. to get it out of the way up front, right? So we can, you know, talk about other cool stuff. Sure. Well, I, I don't know about you, I only have one forged and fire question. Look at you. And it's and it's really from my wife. Okay. 
Um, my wife is Uh-oh. thoroughly my wife is thoroughly impressed anytime Will shot the blade with a bullet. Were those were those one takes? So that was a fucking that was a crazy day. Oh my god. We were on this gun range and it was freezing outside. Yeah. And uh, you know, normally we have this little setup. You know, we got a couple of like, gun experts and you know, not that I don't know how to shoot guns from being from Pennsylvania, <laughs> but anyway, for professional reasons, we had a couple of experts and they had this gizmo. You know, you pull the cord, fires, yeah. jumps back. And it was about three hours we were sitting around waiting for the bullet to actually hit the blade. And Will just walked up and said, come on, screw this. I could do it. And he did. He just walked up and made maybe three tries. Oh, okay. And okay. Bang. I was like, okay, now we can get on with our day. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like, why the hell are we sitting around? Oh, God. Yeah, that's funny. yeah. Every time that he shot a bullet, like every time he shoots a blade, my wife is like, "That's the most badass thing I've ever seen in my life." <laughs> like, so anyway, Will, and she's Will Willis is a yeah. badass. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we had him on uh, back in December, and yeah. and uh, he he was fun. He was fun fun guy to talk to. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Will's great. I love the guy. Yeah. So yeah. So so much ranting. It was fantastic. We had, <laughs> we had so much fun. <laughs> yeah. There I was a lot of ranting about forging fire too. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he really, he really didn't say he spoke much kindly at all everyone, about yeah. forged and fire. He, he, if we, he spoke about anyone, he spoke kindly. Yeah. If he spoke about them, <laughs> 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 yeah. So no, he was. I, I thought I pissed him off one time because I made a joke and and he didn't take kindly it, to it. It spun off. It into did a, spin off. Yeah, it was so, fantastic. Yeah. What? Whatever. <laughs> That's it. I'm done with forged no, and fire. Nobody loves you. That's questions funny. now. So, I think that was <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, I only had a couple of things, actually. One was, um, I'd mentioned it before on, on one of the episodes, but one of the things that I think is cool about Forge and Fire, and like my dad was super, super into it first. He went out and bought all the shit to make, you know, play, and he never did sitting in a fucking garage, <laughs> but he was super excited, you know, when he got it. It, it inspired a lot of people, but um, he was talking to me about it, and it's it really is kind of a really great, like, not that it doesn't appeal to everyone, but it's a great dude show because you don't have any manufactured drama like they're very kind with the editing i'm sure you have a lot of people that are way bigger assholes on the show than you actually they portray it on you know the edited version so it's um you know always it's one thing that's you know, they don't manufacture a lot of obvious drama you know it's it's cool yeah. but actually it, it's funny because you mentioned that because when we first started this back in season one um the t people you know came to us and like, okay, how do we put drama into this show? <laughs> and I stood right up and I was like, no, you don't need to put drama into it. Trust me, yeah, there's yeah. going to be enough drama. And they were like, eh, okay, well, 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 we'll do an episode or two and see. And then after that, they were like, oh yeah, we don't have to do shit. There's enough drama. And they build <laughs> their own drama. We don't do anything yeah, right, until right. that along. Yeah, but but comparatively, I mean, yeah. The, fir- to, uh, the, fir- the very first episode, you got the one knucklehead. It was like, oh, yeah, I've done Thousand Eyes. We found out later that he worked on a knife-making company just sitting on a line. Yeah. Knives. It wasn't like he made knives. And he goes, dang, dang, ding on the vice and snaps oh, the yeah. knife in half. Like, oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, we don't need to build drama. Right. Michael has yeah. to do it for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, the other, only other thing. So we had a, a buddy of mine that I work with uh, was on last week, yeah. uh, Mike. Yeah. And um, he and his kids watch Forest and Fire a lot. Yeah. And his kids are little, like oh, fucking like eight, nine years old. And um, they don't have any concept of how hard you're hitting shit like with the knives. And they're always uh, like, how come he always hurts his hands, Dad? Does he have baby <laughs> hands? So uh, I, I, told, I told him that I was going to tell you that, you know, his kids said you have baby hands. <laughs> I get hate mail all the time. Sure. Like, first of all, I get hate mail for like you're a mean, evil son of a bitch. You know, I'm the same gal with knife making, yada yada yada, all the crap. And then it's like, oh you, oh you, oh you hurt yourself every time you do a strength test. You hurt your hands. Oh, you poor little baby. It's like, get the shit out. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I get blades exploding in my hands. Right. I mean, yeah, I had wrist surgery and all that stuff, but. Yeah, it's it's stronger now than it used to be. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. bring it on. 
That's what I tell people all the time. It's like, send me one of your knives. See what yeah, I can I'm, do with I'm that. The, I'm the tallest kid that Jay said he's going to whip their asses if he ever sees them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I had read an article. Right, I, love, no, I, love, I love talking to kids, motivating kids, and stuff like that. I mean, that's yeah, one of my yeah. favorite things about the show is the inspiration factor and all that. But, well, and, yeah. and I mean, you guys have but, had some young young bladesmiths on there too which which was surprising anytime if somebody comes on there 18 or 19 years old it's like well that's interesting I mean, when i was 18 or 19 years old well i was gonna say i was stupid but i was i was married and having kids at 18 <laughs> or 19 years old so i guess i was kind of stupid <laughs> i was an idiot i was an idiot back then i had no idea about anything um no it, it's it's amazing because i i do i mean i i have kids all over the world actually send me handwritten letters. I didn't know kids did that anymore. Yeah. You yeah. get letters and pictures. I had one kid recently just sent me like a little, you know, you know, one of those little like classroom that you know, picture of his face with like an elf cut out and stuff yeah. like that. And it's just, you know, you know, kids love this stuff and it's just, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. I like the fact that, you know, we weren't even supposed to be, I know, we were actually supposed to be just, filler for history channel and oh, wow. we ended up being a success, successful show and you know kids you know husbands and wives watching the same show at the same time seriously when does that ever happen anymore right yeah and, and it you know so. it's it, it, it jumped you from being a you know master bladesmith to fucking jay fucking nielsen you know that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. i don't even think anybody realized what a master smith is most of the time but <laughs> right but it's it, if nothing else it sounds awesome like if i had right. that, any type of master stamp right. other than masturbator at the end right. of my name it, it sure. would be, i'd be bragging about it. but um, i don't show that t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> i guess the only other question i had and actually uh somebody asked wanted me to ask this as well but um and that was just as far as when they first kicked the show off like how did casting for that work like how did you get into being like one of the primary judges, are they a casting call or did somebody just call you and be like, Hey, uh, you know, we heard about you. Come on. Like, how, how did that work? I, I think somebody died right before the show and they scrambled and found me. Okay. <laughs> uh, now, cause actually, um, actually nobody will tell me this. I've been asking this for like years. Um, <laughs> cause, uh, Doug and Dave knew about, you know, being on the show long before me. And they, they they tell me stories. They were actually talking about to each other. This is a Nielsen guy. Oh, he's a master smith. Oh, he's probably an asshole. <laughs> and yeah, but I did. I just I was working in my shop. I was actually forging a blade. Had the forge running. I got a phone call, and it was somebody from the History Channel, some you know young girl saying, "Oh, hey, yo, yeah, we're gonna do this TV show. You know, judging knives and stuff like that." And I was like, "Okay." Who is this really? Because I thought it was one of my knucklehead knife maker friends, you know, got his <laughs> wife or his girlfriend to call me and do a prank. Because we'd, <laughs> we'd heard about, you know, somebody's talking about doing a knife making TV show. We'd heard about that for a few years and, you know, nothing ever came from it. And it took her about, you know, probably 10 minutes to convince me she was actually from the History Channel. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to do this, you know, like, you know, knife making contest show. It's a you know, basically a game show. And I was like, eh, yeah. Eh, that sounds kind of interesting. He's like, no, what, 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 what do you want to be a judge? I was like, oh, yeah, that sounds a lot better. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm in. I'm down. That's funny. Yeah. And then so they I, told me, because it was based off the Chopped TV show, the cooking show. Yeah. It was the same guy that, that did Chopped started uh, yeah. Forge of Fire. And I was like, you know, me and my wife watch Chopped all the time. Heck, fuck yeah, yeah I'll, watch, I'll do that. That's like, kind of how they wrote me in, I think. <laughs> I, I had read an, an unofficial article about fortune fire and said that you were brought on to kind of be the simon cowell of mm -hmm. forged in fire that you were actually brought on to play the asshole i i wasn't brought on to play the asshole i was just the asshole just good at it i'm not good at it um, <laughs> yeah well yeah. no it, it's it's it all the time it's like yeah i'm not trying to be a dick it's just I'm being straightforward. You know, it's right. like if somebody asks me, if somebody shows me a knife and says, hey, what do you think of this? If it doesn't look like a total piece of shit, I'm going to say, hey, nice work. You know, good job. You're right. on the right path. But if you ask me to critique your knife, well, Different. then butter off. You know, then right. I'm going to pick out every little 
tiny thing. And that's what they want me to do on the show. That's yeah. what I was hired for. So yeah. it's like, yeah, I'm going to pick it apart and I'm serious about it. And I'm not trying to be an asshole, but if I come across that way, tough shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's, we've talked about that before. Like when I was doing music and sure. doing all that, like if somebody that was just starting out came up and asked, you know, and just say, Hey, how is, you know, how to go? I, you know, super encouraging. Hey, you're doing great. Just keep it up. But if they ever asked me like specifics and I'm like, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, yeah. you know, ty type of deal, you know, it's like, I'll be as encouraging as I can until you want me to start actually digging into it. And that's, yeah, you know, yeah, I, I knew when I, when I started off, when I was, you know, when I first joined the ABS and I was trying to get my journeyman, my master's and rating and stuff like that, I learned quickly who to ask about what I was working on, you know, where I need to work, where I need to improve stuff. Cause you go to certain people and there is nothing but praise and you go to other people and it's like, okay, you need to do this, 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 that's fucked up looking too. Don't do that again. <laughs> and those are the people, those are the people that I stuck around with. Because I wasn't looking for praise. I was looking to improve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for sure, and when you have to have that, like if you sure. legitimately want to get better at something, you have to be willing for somebody to tell you that you suck, you know, yeah. so you know how to improve. Oh, yeah. You know, but um, by uh, what Matthew Tyndale says hi like three times. So we're going to say, <laughs> what's up, dude? <laughs> and what, oh. Troy, who is Steven sleeping with to get all these top talent interviews? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Troy, your mom is very well connected, sir. <laughs> Oh God, <laughs> that was really about it. I mean, I had a couple like general like blades. Sure, we're done. Fire. Okay, all right, bye guys. Oh yeah, see. <laughs> no, that that was all the uh, the forest and fire sure. stuff that I had. I just wanted to, to get well, some of that because my my dad was like, you know, he wanted me to ask the the casting and all that sure. stuff. Which, which yeah, random, but I got you. Um, casting, I have no idea. I mean, yeah, yeah. Actually, the, it, it, actually, a, a good thing about the cast or a funny thing about the casting is. I haven't seen anybody I know from knife making for like a couple seasons now because we've actually made our own uh, cast. You know, oh, wow. Basically, a lot of a lot of the Smiths that are coming on the show nowadays are people that started forging in season one. Yeah. When oh, wow. in the show. So we're basically producing our own contestants, which oh, is that's it's it's kind of scary too, but. It's yeah, cool yeah. at the same time. That's cool. That, yeah, we had um, who Mike, spicy Mike. He oh was, yeah, he was yeah, Mike Hurley. Yeah. he he actually was no, in the military. Mike. Oh, yeah, he was he was a uh, in the military with a buddy of mine, and so just through them. So I was joking. We should just be a Forge and Fire podcast at this point. We've had <laughs> you're the you're the third, the best so far. But you know the sure the, the third. <laughs> sure, we we reached out to Doug though. Yeah. Haven't heard back yet. But. It's just it's just, it's, it's just like my my wives, right? The third one's been the best. Yeah, one. that's true. That's so. true. No, uh, yeah, Mike was Mike was a fun fun hang. Uh, drinking his Keystone and talking about his his spicy sauce, but uh, no, Mike hilarious. Is the only yeah. guy we've ever had during an episode pull out a banana, put hot sauce on it, ate it on yeah. set. It's like, that was so crazy. They had to air it. Sure. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, I think so. He he actually asked us to come to his his shop and film some stuff for him. So we, we haven't nailed down a, a time yet, yeah. but we're we're planning to go visit him in Decane, Illinois and film some stuff I'm, I'm for gonna, him. I'm going to fuck up. Yeah, well, just, just be careful night. around lunchtime. <laughs> oh, no, he if asked us. If, we, if you're not in the hot stuff, be careful. Well, he, he asked us if we would uh, uh, eat a Carolina Reaper. I think that's what it was yeah. up there and film it. And like, eh, maybe <laughs> we, we could maybe we're, could be talking. We're, we're to desperate it. for attention. Right. That's, yeah. that's true. <laughs> um, okay. Did you have any other? No, no, not Forge and Fire. I mean, I had, not, not Forge and Fire. No, but I know you have a question from your son. Oh yeah. So my, my kid, before I came on, he wanted, he had two questions. Cause I'm, we usually have phone lines open for people to call in, but I've seen you got you and uh, Doug's, uh, I say him like, I know him, but you, you and <laughs> Doug Marquez, um Instagram live streams. And it's just like, bub, 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 bub. and I was like, I don't want the phone to be, you know, going crazy. So yeah. anyway, uh, so no my, worries. so my, my kid, he wanted me to ask you a two part question is one. Have you ever been punched in the butthole? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and and two, I'm would so you make would you make him some ninja stars? That was <laughs> that was her back to back. He went, oh my god! Okay, 
Okay, just the fact that he asked if I ever got punched in the butthole, I might just out of respect make him some ninja stars for that. <laughs> yeah, well, he's got this thing like him and his buddies punch each other in the butt. You know, Hell no, I, I get it. Yeah, sure. So he was like, "Do you think Jay Nelson's what the hell are kids doing nowadays?" Oh my god. <laughs> He came up behind me the other day and he has this thing that he does is he came up and poked me right in the fucking ass and he yeah. was like, secret fingers, death of a thousand years. And I was like, what are you doing, what? man? Yeah. Oh my God. Well, so what happened in good old days where you just walk somebody and flick them in the dick? Right. <laughs> exactly. Sure. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. So anyway, I, I told him I would, I would ask you those two things. So no, <laughs> I don't, you? I don't remember him being punched in the butthole. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm so distracted. I can't remember what the bro that was. <laughs> Sorry, the ninja stars. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just promised. No, I have, I have right. made a ninja stars. Actually, I used to have fun when I first started around with a nice making a fortune. Um, because you know you, you're waiting for your steel to heat up. So I had a, a a silhouette on a piece of plywood. I threw a knife at, and then I started getting like a little crazy. I started throwing circular saw blades. Yeah. Um, that yeah. was kind of fun because I saw it in a horror movie. I'm a horror movie sure. nut, so I was like, right. oh, "We actually can we actually in. do that in real life?" And yes, you can. <laughs> so, nice. We had somebody just asked that. When did uh, you know that bladesmithing would be your career? Never. I'm still not sure it's my career. I don't even know how <laughs> this happened. Um, no, I. It was a hobby. It was a just. I, I tell people all the time, it was a hobby that just snowballed out of control. Um, I, you know. I started fooling around with, you know, um, making, you know, bayonets, you know, taking old bayonets, cleaning them up, refinishing them, you know, trying to, you know, rehandle them. That's where I got my fit and finish obsession from. Um, and then you know, I, I bought a knife kit. I bought a blade and I bought a piece of antler and put that together. And, you know, that was fun for a little bit. And then it was like, well, I want to make my own knife. So I started grinding stuff. I started removal. You know, grinding saw blades and files and denies and such as that. And, uh, you know, then that got boring. And Bill Moran, right around that time, was like reintroducing Damascus to the world. And I was like, oh, fuck yeah, I want to do that. But I don't want to buy it like most people are doing. I want to make my own. So I created my own little hell and decided to you know, take <laughs> Damascus and learn how to do that. And, yeah, man, I screwed myself. And, you know, here I am now. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so what was the first knife you ever made on your own? Like as far as forging and everything, what was the shape or whatever? What was the first thing you made? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. I've made so much stuff. Um, it was probably something horrible. <laughs> I, I've, I've literally, I live in, um, in a beautiful part of Pennsylvania in the mountains. And yeah. at the bottom of the hill, where I live, this when I ever, and I've literally gone to some knife shows, found knives that I made when I started out. Oh wow! Yeah, purchased them and threw them in the Susquehanna River. Because <laughs> I didn't want anybody to see that ugly ass shit ever again. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It's horrible. Uh. It's horrible. I remember one had a a brass hex nut on the end it's like oh my god seriously i thought that was cool at the time in the river <laughs> <laughs> oh shit uh we had one more fours and fire question this will be the last this one is a, uh yeah somebody you watching the saying that, but well, well no this these are people watching the stream now this no, is not it's, a it's cool it's cool. Don't worry about it. I'm fine. Don't, don't, don't be a dick jay <laughs> <laughs> you're not on I tv got that says i am <laughs> <laughs> no but uh he just want to know if you guys ever have to do retakes on the show as far as retakes like I tell you. He, he didn't specify so i'm, I'm assuming yeah, you we, know, we do retake. everything is done twice except for the testing yeah right. unless we screw something up which you know fortunately doesn't happen very often <laughs> um but yeah you know everything we do twice like even when you know will or grady were like revealing the finale weapon to the last two guys in the show and you know, it's like oh hey psych oh no you you really don't you gotta listen to this one more time before we show it to you and it's like yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah it's 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 usually pretty much straight on there's not a lot it's kind of hard to retake stuff especially during the testing yeah for when sure you're just like beating living crap out of stuff you know it's hard to you you can't and it 
honestly, we have to go by, I guess you call them game show laws. Right. Yeah. Because technic- technically, we are a game show. Yeah. So there's a lot of legal involved and stuff like that. You know, like if, you know, you're cutting something and if you don't cut the second one the way you cut the first one, there can be a whole rigmarole and stuff like that. Cause it's got to be fair. Yeah. 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 For sure. All right. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So, uh, my next question was about his blades. So I went onto your website. It's actually how I ended up contacting you initially, but, um, uh, a lot of the, the weapons you make are just fucking beautiful. Like they really are. Like I'm not a bladesmith. I'm not a collector, but they're absolutely gorgeous pieces. And one of the things that fascinates that. about yeah. bladesmithing in general is it's one of the only um, util- utilitarian like art forms. Like it really is. Like there's a balance. Like you can uh, be very useful utilitarian, but there's also an amount of design and elegance that goes into making uh, some of those top tier yeah. blades. And um, well, that was a statement. I had a question, and my brain just trailed the fuck off. I was just picturing those beautiful <laughs> fucking Damascus pieces. Oh no, yeah. So, but um, oh, I, I guess what I was going to ask is. Like I know there's a couple of bladesmiths that I've known, the few of them, you know, they don't consider necessarily what they do in, in art, but I do because it's a crafted thing that you're building you to design. I mean, it's very much um, uh, an art form in, in my opinion. Yeah. And I guess the, so all that leading into um, as far as like when you're building blades that aren't custom ordered, I mean, do you have a design process? Do you just kind of let it take shape? Like what is your usual process for building this? I basically just get an idea in my head and just run with it. Um, okay. one of the best examples of that I have is, uh, I mean, cause you know, I do a lot of orders. I mean, that's, that's most of what I do, but you know, you get a bug in my butt and, you know, like to have got several years ago, uh, I was just, you know, laying in bed. I don't sleep. Well. I'm a good sleeper. So I'm thinking, I was like, okay, we make knives out of ball bearings and we put things in canisters. Why don't we fill a canister full of ball bearings and forge all that and see what happens? And then I did that the next day and tested it for a few weeks. And then that was the the most popular Damascus pattern I made for like the next three years. Oh wow! And and then it became a thing on forge fire to the canisters. I mean, you know, that's everybody you know, kind of knows me as you know. Hey, Jay Nielsen, you're going to do a canister. Yeah. So, but you know, yeah, if you just get an idea sometimes and you just play around with that. And you know, you get to do it between the orders and stuff like that. But right. yeah, that's, that, that's the fun thing. That, that's the thing I really like about the forging knives and, and making blades up like that is just getting out of the crazy idea in your head. Like, ah, let me try that. Yeah. And you run with it. You know, like I, you know, especially with Forge of Fire, because I've, I've done for years, I've done pre-testing for like round one and two. And, you know, it's just making stuff to beat the living hell out of. And, you know, hey, can this work? And it's like, uh, shit, I never tried that. Okay, let's see. <laughs> let's try it out. And, uh, geez, I remember one time there was a, God, they had a, like a board, like this, like two by eight laid out and had all kinds of like lengths of like chain and and cable and stuff like that and they're like okay hack through all that what <laughs> <laughs> it's like you sons of bitches and i'm sitting there i'm swinging i'm swinging away and i'm just beating the hell on my own knives and i'm like i hate you guys you're not my friends I hate my friends you all <laughs> suck you go to hell <laughs> and yeah, just just crazy stuff. I mean, you know, people that bitch about you know some of the strength tests on the show, it's like, oh, those are those are unrealistic. You yeah. haven't even seen the stuff we've done behind the scenes that never got on the show. <laughs> and I got one time they told me, hey, here's the knife you made. Hack through that chain link fence. What? <laughs> I'm actually <laughs> in prison here. What the hell? <laughs> I don't think I've so, ever yeah, owned. It's, a, kind, it's kind of crazy sometimes. Table. Yeah, I was. Like, I don't think I've ever owned a knife I couldn't hit against a, like a table without it just fucking breaking. Like, yeah. But you know, I've never bought anything that hadn't come from Walmart. So <laughs> <laughs> it's actually amazing what the contestants can do, and, and yeah. the, the the trials we give them in the short amount of time, and it's it's amazing. They just kind of like rise up, you know, and just they kick ass. I mean, yeah. 
they really do. It's it's amazing. You know, the craftsmanship and, and stuff. I mean, nobody's making their best knife on this show. I mean, yeah. you know, time competition with limited resources and some crazy ass challenge. Right. But what yeah. they make is amazing a lot of times. Oh yeah. There's, I, I don't, well, that's one of the things we asked Will was like, or maybe it was maybe it was Mike, spicy Mike was like like legitimately you guys have a three hour challenge. Is it three hours? And he's like, No, it's three hours. Like you're <laughs> we're we're trying to to, to get this oh, shit yeah, done. It is. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah there's 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 no bullshit in the timing. Yeah. Um the the, the thing that looks weird you know, for me, you know, actually mm -hmm. sitting there watching the challenges. You know, when they're, they're when you're watching the show and they're like, Oh, there's you know, four minutes left and you see somebody on the grinder. Eh, the time might be a little skewed on that and stuff like right. that. But, oh yeah, there's editing. But yeah, well, no, that, we, three hours is three hours. We don't give them any extra time. Yeah. Oh yeah. And we had uh, Michael Powell just said he practiced for a year doing canisters and still looked like an idiot trying to peel a canister on the show. So yeah. there's. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was tell folks if you don't we don't ask you to peel the can don't peel the can. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the goddamn thing on. Move on. <laughs> Make damn knife. <laughs> so, yeah. okay. Was it well, like when I did feed the judges when it was like, oh no, you don't only have to peel the can, you have to make the can. Son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> well, on beat I the knew judges, I was gonna get screwed. I knew they were gonna stick it to me. So you you competed against uh, a guy that sat on the panel for your Master Bladesmith certification, right? I can't remember yeah, the guy. Foster. Name. Yep. Bert Bert. Foster. That's who it was. That was intense, man. That was a great episode honestly so Bert is amazing i mean i've i've looked up to Bert. oh my god i i remember the first time i met Bert foster uh i was i wasn't even a journeyman yet i i went to a hammer in and this big kid walks up you know me and a bunch of guys are talking and you know he starts pulling out knives i had no clue who he was until i saw his nice nice logo on the knife and i was like holy shit you're Bert foster <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you know, I don't know. He's, he's probably like ten years younger than me or something like that. But I was just like, well, just for Foster. I'm like a fanboy. <laughs> and and yeah, yeah. Later on, 2008, I did my Master Smith testing, and Bert was one of the judges, and we've been friends. I I, I Bert's awesome. I think he's a great guy. And yeah, yeah every once in a while, a contestant will you know try to give me a poke in the ribs. Oh, you lost. Oh. Yep. It's like, yeah, but I lost to Bert Foss. I'll see what you can do. Right. <laughs> right. Well, I'm so my one, person I'm, one person I'm willing to lose to is Bert. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the best part of that episode was like, you wonder if Jay Nielsen fucks up. Jay Nielsen just fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's funny when we do, you know, when the contestants, they have uh, the only time we get to talk to the contestants during the show is when they read them all the rules and stuff like that. And we get talking for a few minutes and, you know, Doug does his spiel. Dave does his spiel. And I walk up and the first thing I say is, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, you know, it kind of lightens the mood a little bit. Yeah. That's but, awesome. uh, yeah, no, yeah. I, I tell people too. Yeah. I tell them that. Yeah, you know, don't fuck up in there because I know how it feels because I fucked up. <laughs> and, you know, hey, we all do. Hey, the the second time you know Bert was on, you know Bert won his first time. He yeah. won the championship. Second time he got you know booted in round one. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's all crapshoot. You know, you some days you're you know some days you're on top. Some days you're going home. Yeah. Yeah, so it happens to all of us. But that actual episode is when we were uh, we were watching it, and just that slew of like beep 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 when you were on, you know, just, yeah. just profaning. We we're like, <laughs> he'd be fun to have on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to email him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so anyway, yeah, so it was you're funny. It, it, it's it, yeah, I got to sleep a lot more when I was on the floor than I was in yeah. the judges' chair. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So so you mentioned you mentioned Damascus earlier, and. So in, in, I've never been there. Right. So uh, uh, we have a former Fortune Fire champion here in Knoxville, John Phillips. And and I I follow him on Instagram and I notice he uses a lot of Damasteel. And That's and I had not heard of that before. Yeah. And but I just kind of wondered your opinions on buying, you know, Damascus steel like pre-made and and as 
as opposed to, you know, folding it and, and layering it and all that, doing it all yourself. I mean, and I get it. If you're trying to make a living on it, maybe that's easier and, and more cost efficient to buy it pre-made. I don't know, but. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of times you know, when you're buying Damascus, you, know, you can buy it sheets and bars and stuff like that. Um, a lot of times it's, it's folder makers, um, which is one of the things which I don't understand why they haven't done a folder show yet, but. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people that don't forge and there's a lot of people that can't forge. You know, they live in, you know, the suburbs or something like that. They're into knife making, you know, they're going to get arrested by, you know, you know, the neighbors ratting them out because they got a power hammer runner or something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, Damascus is stainless steel Damascus, which is a different process than what you see on the show when we're making Damascus because it's, you know, it's different caustic elements and, Stuff like that, and I don't do it, so I don't. I'm not hurt on it or anything like that. But um, yeah, you know, I could see you know if you're in a situation, if you're in a place where you can't forge or something like that, you know, I buy it. That's, yeah, buy someone, run with it. You know, just don't tell people that, that you not- made it because <laughs> I've seen because I've seen that before. I've seen that night shows before. I've walked to people's tables and I've I've looked at their stuff. I tell. Oh yeah, I made that Damascus. No, you didn't. I can tell you didn't. I can tell you didn't. You know, one so, of the things I would tell people, yeah, I tell customers to look for all the time. You know, if it was if the if it's Damascus steel and it was forged, the pattern will taper towards the tip. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't, it was just cut out and You know, no nothing was forged. Huh. So it's you know, it's one of those things you look for. Nice. So when people are making knives out of damascus steel, they're not forging that shape, or what? Uh, how? How? I mean, maybe I'm no, just confused. No, they're it. no, they're cutting it out. Interesting. Cutting Didn't grinding. know that. Huh? Yeah. I mean, okay. I mean, there, there there might be a couple of people out there doing it, but you know, forging damascus steel is tough. Um, you know, stainless steel damascus. Yeah, you know, that that's like I said, I'm no expert on it, but uh, yeah, most it's just out. Oh, okay. Nice. Interesting. Okay. All right. You look like you like had something. Said, look, for the, look for that trailing paper. Yeah. That's, that's a big indicator. Yeah. Nice. So I have a, uh, it's not really a bladesmithing question, but it's just something I noticed from, and it's not really necessarily a forged and fire question, but I noticed it from watching forged and fire. A lot of bladesmiths wearing kilts. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> I've never no seen Jay Nielsen in a kilt. And the way I, no feel is, it, it, I feel it. You ain't, like, ain't going to caddy kill. I can tell you that right now. Right. Well, that's what I was going to say. I mean, if Jay Nielsen's not wearing a kilt, is it really necessary? <laughs> uh, I don't I don't actually know. Baker wears a kilt every once in a while. Yeah. Jason, Jason would that's wear a good. kilt. Uh, we've got contestants that come on wearing kilts. I don't. I think they just like their balls flapping in the breeze. <laughs> okay, that's well, just so odd I mean, thing I know. Really it's really hot in the forge, and you know, yeah. maybe that pulls the junk off. I don't know. <laughs> One of the things that amazes me, though, like like every circle of of uh, of artists, um, whether it's glass blowers, uh, fucking painters, sculptors, bladesmiths, whatever, they all have some, some weirdos. Distinctly weird <laughs> motherfuckers, absolutely. And um, I called it. <laughs> yeah. And what I just I think it's funny because it's almost like the the people flock to that community like sure. you know because my wife's you know she's a an artist and she's weird as shit and like her artist friends are fucking weird as shit like yeah. it's awesome um but like musicians are the same way like they find these pockets oh, yeah, of sure. like minded people and that's what um gives them that sense of community it's amazing to me yeah it's amazing to me that I'm the normal guy. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually brings me to my next thing. This is not like the first time in my life I've ever been the normal guy. (laughs) (laughs) I was actually weird out. Yeah. Y'all, dude, I feel you. I was going to ask because you recently on Instagram got the fucking custom ass Freddy Krueger glove, which is cool as shit. Please? Oh, that's that's badass. Yeah. Yeah. So you carry that with you everywhere? (laughs) Uh, Pretty much, yeah. I'm actually thinking about getting a left hand one too. Just for the hell of it. <laughs> it was funny because we, uh, well, I, I had all this stuff on set and I had, um, you know, a couple of masks 
Oh, yeah. The glove, my hockey <laughs> mask that I wore, the Halloween episode, um, and, and in a box. You know, it was almost like I was getting fired. I was walking out with a cardboard <laughs> box full of stuff. <laughs> and I'm in the elevator, and people are just looking at me like, what the fuck is with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I had like the weirdest grocery bag in the fucking world on the <laughs> elevator. And all these people look at me like, are we going to get out of here? That's funny. Well, you were like, cause you're a little older than us, but like, you know, in your, I guess, you know, teens, twenties, that would have been like in the, in the prime of all the Friday the 13th yeah. and the nightmare on Elm street and you know, the Halloween oh, yeah. movies like, it was a great time um, to be in the horror movie franchises for sure. Oh, God, I remember I was like, I think I was seven or eight years old when I went to a matinee of the original Alien. Yeah. And I was like, I'm hooked. I have blood, <laughs> gut, gore, love it, love it. Um, yeah. yeah, I've always been a horror movie nut. Even the bad horror movies are, are, are comedies to me. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, I'm into that. I mean, God, my here's my COVID mask right here. My wife got me. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it's she's nice a total to enabler. She's a total enabler. It's nice to see Jaws on the horror movie COVID mask because most people don't think of Jaws as as as, as much a horror movie as it is, which is very much a horror movie. Yeah, yeah. It's so, it's, it's scared the totally shit. a horror movie. Well, yeah, yeah, the scare the hell out of me. Yeah, it took, <laughs> my, it took my wife. I don't know how many years took her to get me to start circling when we went on vacation, and the only thing I'm looking for is sharks. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm not watching that's not any of these movies. Yeah, I heard Bill Burr say one time is why he doesn't go in the ocean is because you're having fun on the surface, but all the scary shit is below the water and you don't see it coming <laughs> for you. <laughs> so that's I uh, 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 love Bill Burr, by the way. But yeah, a bunch of comedians are like, you know, uh, uh, seaweed, first out, scary as because oh, yeah. you don't know what it is. You just feel it brush by you and you're like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh god! Yeah, my daughter's getting super into horror movies right now. She loves oh, yeah? them so much, Good. but she's—I haven't let her watch some of the the more slashers because there's so much like teen sex. Which oh, she's only yeah. twelve, so she's not quite right. you know there yet. But um, she loves the supernatural thrillers, like fucking the Conjuring movies and yeah. Insidious and all that shit. So, but you know, in in a year or so, okay. I'll introduce you to the 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 good shit. But so, do you have cool. a favorite? One of my favorites. One of my favorites was the original Evil Dead. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Sam Raimi and that. And I just the other day, because we have so much downtime when we're shooting, and I watched there was a the season, first episode of season two of Creep Show. And the second part was a total original Evil, evil Dead like throwback. And I was just <laughs> loving it. I was like, oh my God, I was watching this shit when I was like 12 or something like that. <laughs> <It was just laughs> have, have, you seen the evil, have you seen the Evil Dead remake that came out a few years ago? Yeah. Oh yeah, I did. It was pretty good. Yeah, much yeah, di- was, much different vibe than the good. original one. I enjoyed one. it. Yeah, but yeah, you can't beat Ash. No, yeah. not at all. Oh no, yeah. I, I rewatched. Yeah, I rewatched that's, that's that. That's one of the things on my bucket list. Before I die, I would love to meet Bruce Campbell. Just yeah, because I'm such a fan. Yeah, well, if if you do call us, we'd love to. You know, hang <laughs> yeah. <out. laughs> we'll, do, we'll do we'll do a we'll do a conference call thing. There you go. That'll work. <laughs> no, we we wouldn't we wouldn't step in on you like that, man. Right. We wouldn't cock block you with Bruce. Like, there's no way. Uh, that's funny. I get this. Uh, I get a um, collage um, that yeah, somebody made me. Recently. My wife actually uh, commissioned it. it. Has got like you know, it's got Freddie, Pinhead, Michael Myers, you know, Chucky, all that stuff. And I loved it so much. I I asked for another one. <laughs> and it's got it's got him in it too, so it's like okay. And now we're going to do the rest of them from the '80s <laughs> horror movies. Yeah. So yeah. Do you have a That's Do you fun. have a favorite franchise out of out of that time period, or is it just all one bunch of amazingness? Uh geez. Actually, it's either got to be the original Alien or the original Evil Dead. Uh, those okay. those are the two that was just like. Okay. It's two solid choices. There, you can honestly. you can make stuff and tear people apart and get away with it. Cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That's. I think Alien was the first rated R movie I ever saw. That or Terminator, one of the two. I know, dad, Alien is still, Alien holds up. Aliens. I mean, some some stuff doesn't hold. Alien is a, is still an amazing movie. I so. I, I prefer the sequel. I yeah. prefer Aliens. That, that's fine. Just yeah. me. Like I like them both almost equally, but yeah. So. Well, the original Alien was a horror movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The second Alien was an action movie. 
Okay. And you third go. One, well, I just feel bad about myself. Really kind of fucked up. But. Yeah. No, the third was <laughs> fucking terrible. But <sighs> Jane Nielsen. Funny, just, I tell my wife all the time, she reminds me of Sigourney Weaver, and she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Just don't worry about it. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, I'm, I think. And he'll probably look at later and yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the guy um, that that made the the glove for you um, started following us on in- Instagram uh, last couple of days. So I, th- I I think we're probably going to reach out to see if we can get him on as well. So that's oh, interesting. Anders, that'd be that'd be awesome. He's yeah. cool yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah. He made me the glove, and then he made these for me. Oh wow. wow. That's a great fucking mask. Like yeah. I said, I've I was you know going through the Instagram and I saw the picture of that a yeah. few days ago. It's fantastic. Jeez. And then the other one that I'm getting a lot of reactions from. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. It's 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 beautiful. It re- it really brings out your eyes. <laughs> That's what everybody tells me. <laughs> he's actually sending me a hat to go with it too so oh that's awesome yeah oh yeah, yeah. anders is he's cool dude very talented super talented yeah. and yeah i was i was like super happy to hook up with him because you yeah, know he does great stuff i mean like i said the glove i mean this thing fully functional i mean this yeah. actually has steel blades they came almost sharp um mm-hmm. once i'm once I'm sure I'm not going to rip my face off, I'm going to finish the edges on them and make them razor sharp. Yeah. I, so, I, w- I want to make sure I keep, I mean, as much as, as much as a lot of people <laughs> like to get ripped off, yeah, I'd rather, yeah, yeah, try not to do it myself. So did he forge those blades and everything or, or he just grind them out or like how much, I don't know how much work goes into that. Uh, he works, he works blades. And I'm not sure if he forged them. I don't, Think so when you mostly talk to move stuff, um, you'd have to talk to him. I, I there is definitely forging involved because he's got to mold and shape, you yeah. know, all the joints and everything. But uh, no, it was it was just cool. I mean, you know, to get somebody, this is the guy that has made Freddy Krueger's claws, right? You know, um, for twenty plus years. Yeah. And he, you know, call, contacts me out of the blue and says, "Hey, I hear you're a her movie guy. Want a glove? You, yes. What do you think I'm going to say? Of course, I want a glove. <laughs> I one of those since I was like 12 years old. Right, right. That's a, that. That's the equivalent of having like, like, a hottest girl. You know, like when you're in high school, calling you back. Hey." You know, fuck. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> I'm not saying no to this. It's like, what do you think? I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me think about it. I'll, yeah, you gotta I'll play get, the long. play the long game. <laughs> now, let me think. At, at that point, there's no long game. It's like <laughs> right. at first, <laughs> especially when you're a teenager. Right. Oh my god. God, long time ago. Oh. Yeah. I was gonna say how 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 cool was uh twenty year old Jay? Would have been that have been what like nineteen eighty nine, nineteen ninety? Like where oh, was 20 the twenty year old Jay was a dork? <laughs> <laughs> the the only thing that saved my butt in high school was you know I was dating this girl and you know there was this senior that she broke up with and he was after an I am and it just worked out in some stupid way that he was a total jackass. I beat his ass, and that carried me through high school. So I got by. But yeah, yeah, I, mean, I had. Uh, oh God, yeah, you know, I was. It reminds me of the Stephen King. Yeah, it Losers Club. Yeah, yeah. You know, we were base. We were basically the Losers Club. Yeah, you know, we you know bunch of bunch of knuckleheads just you know doing stupid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh but even then you know there was some really great artists that i was hanging out with you know there was one kid geez i can't remember his name i was talking to my ex-wife about this or i was talking to my wife about this recently this kid he used to play guitar and i think he left school because he was so good he's got to go to hollywood and you know, play guitar and there was another kid that was a great artist and i had him actually like spray paint you know, made in Japan on the back of my denim jacket. And it, you know, it was beautiful. <laughs> he did, you know, and it's like, you know, where did all this talent go? where did these people go? Because back then I had no talent. I was just an idiot. 
Yeah. And now, you know, if I went to a, a school, you know, I'd probably be like, hey, you actually did something. It's like, what happened to the idiots that fucking were doing something before I left here? <laughs> yeah, we have a, a buddy of ours that are, that's like that. Um, he's such a phenomenal guitar player. Like, oh, yeah. The best I know, one of the best I've ever seen. Like, yes. the guy's legitimately just amazingly talented. Um, and then decided around in his early 20s that yeah, he wanted to go he, basically work as a booking agent for a church yeah. and has never played guitar since yeah, then i was like dude if i had england and pastors of church yeah, now like, if i had an it. ounce of his talent i'd have been living off of cocaine in a tour bus by now <laughs> like that is absolutely where i would be well what the hell is wrong with him yeah uh, man and, and you know the th other thing is he's one of the most humble guys he's that i've nice. ever met yeah. in, in my life but uh, well i mean hey that's his thing you know? No, yeah, sure. and that's what I've you know we've talked about. I'm I'm glad for him that he did legitimately what he wanted to do and felt like he should do, and I can't fault him for that. But it's like Jesus, man, you were <laughs> you had there was so much you oh, could yeah. have done with that. Like he was getting offers as yeah. for a to be a studio musician and all that stuff. You know, yeah, I mean, seriously, right. as long as they're happy, hey, fine. I, yeah. I don't care what you're doing as long as you're not you know, like molesting animals or kids. I don't care. Right. You know, as long as you're happy. But, you know, sometimes you have to wonder, like, Tennessee. seriously, is that what you're doing? Yeah. Well, <laughs> here in Tennessee, the animal part is, you know, a little more on the fence. But definitely the kids thing is bad. Dude, I'm in Pennsylvania. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> we, so, don't, we, don't, we don't go for sheep. We go for goats because they have horns. You can hold on to them easier. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I need to write that down. Hold yeah. on a minute. Goats, horns, <laughs> hold. Taking notes. I know. I am taking notes. Just be careful. There's a difference between rams and ewes. No, I get you. I get you. <laughs> be careful. Uh, it's all the same when they push back. Yeah. But we had a. Um... I, told, I told my wife that joke. She just looked at me like, you're disgusting. <laughs> I know that look. She has a humor, too. <laughs> So we did have one question that just said, how has Jay maintained his level of humility? Um, I've noticed he's very willing to sit down and talk to folks from all walks. Is so that a jab at us? So first of you, <laughs> fuck you, tradesmen, because, you know. <laughs> yeah. How, how have you stayed so humble, Jay? I, I, don't, I, I don't let the tea crap get to me. As far as I'm concerned, you know, because I've had people tell me, oh, you're, you're, a TV personality, your TV star. No, I'm just a knucklehead who likes making knives from Pennsylvania, and I happen to be on this little knife making show. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, I don't consider I don't consider the show my occupation. That's the sideline. Right. I mean, making knives is, as far as I'm concerned, that's how I make my living. Yeah, um, right. You know, the, the TV show is just a bonus. I mean, it's it's basically a great promotion thing. That's what um, I was going to say. But, you can't ask for better promotion for yeah. your your personal business than that. I mean, that's a fantastic. I would imagine, probably a double edged sword in some areas, but I would imagine just the notoriety uh, helps significantly. Oh yeah, it's huge. Um, yeah, you know, it gives me more opportunity to just you know do what I want a lot more. Um, but at the same time, I've got God, like four years of back orders that I got to make and I'm going to fulfill the orders, you know, right. Cause I, I, I made a commitment to do them. I'm going to do, them, you know, yeah. and as long as what he dies out before I do, they'll get their knives. <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's definitely made things easier. I can, you know, more freedom and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. the biggest thing is, um, you know, making life easier for me and the wife, you know, oh, for she sure. doesn't have to work as hard. Uh, she's been a nurse forever. She works in the OR doing anesthesia. Um, she's gone to school. God, she's gone back to school like three, four, or five times. That's how many times uh, I've dropped out of school. But uh, yeah, you know, she's she's worked her butt off, and you know I'm trying to make life easier for both of us. So, so yeah, I mean, yeah. that's big. That's the big thing for me. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think anytime someone finds success, popularity, whatever you want to call it, um, at a later in life rather than in your teens or your early twenties or whatever, it tend to have a little more of that humility that that people that that this uh, tradesman channel guy is talking about. I mean, 
even your actors, I mean, your um, Brian Cranston, let's, let's use him for example. I mean, Malcolm in the middle later in his life. It, and even though like that was a popular show for him, I mean, he's in his fifties and he's doing breaking bad and he's really just shoots through the roof and everyone knows who he is, but he's, you know, if you see interviews with him, he's a super humble guy. So, I mean, I think a lot of that has to do with when do you get your popularity or your, or your fame or whatever. And I think that that probably plays a little bit into it, but then also just knowing, like you said, you're just a knucklehead that's making knives. I mean, so a lot of it is insecurity too. I mean, I I've noticed that. Oh, that yeah, that's um, always good. I mean, I mean, this is the only TV show I've been on, but you know, I've been around more industry type people and I've noticed a lot of insecurity. Um, you know, if you don't, if you're not happy with yourself, you're going to try to make yourself seem more important on TV. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it, for sure. yeah it makes complete sense. I, mean, sure. I, well, I don't care. I mean, I, I was, I was ready to get fired in season two. <laughs> and they haven't fired me yet. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, okay. You know, you know, yeah. well, well, I think I, I, love, the- I love, show, I love what we've done. I love who we've inspired and stuff like that. But if it ended tomorrow, okay. I'd just be back in my shop for tonight. Yeah. And you guys do long seasons. I mean, your, your typical TV show runs like 22, 25 episodes and you guys are doing nearly 40 on some seasons. That's, I mean, it's an insane, we, it's gotta be. We insane started out. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Season one, we did eight episodes. Yeah. Season two, we did 10 and then we immediately jumped to 40. Yeah. <laughs> That's an, it's gotta be an insane schedule that you're, I mean, it's crazy. Thank God. I don't know. Um, yeah, since I did the, the wrist surgery thing, yeah. which was not knife related, by the way, because everybody has that. Um, it was yeah, just you were jerking off. So. What was it? Uh, like I said, now, I was... geez, if only I could hurt myself that way. Oh my God. <laughs> not for a lack of trying. I can tell you that right, right now. Jeez. I mean, I used to have long brown flowing hair. You know, you Me too. <laughs> Oh my God! But no, it's just no, after that. I mean, I, I had the sledding seasons, and we started out with Jason yeah. Knight filling in, um, and then Jason left, and now Ben's filling in. And uh, it's just you know, I love the show and all that stuff, but oh God, I, at this point, you know, these guys are spending nine months out yeah. of the year shooting. Oh, I shit. go in my mind. I I, I freaking kill myself. Yeah. Because I I I need to make something. I can't just stand around. I mean I. Yeah. You know, I gotta start doing stuff. I I I start taking steak knives apart and making something like this. <laughs> well, I mean, in Dave, part It'd of Dave's good, job, but I'd be I'd be trying. Well, I mean, but part of Dave's job on the show is making some of those uh, the the stuff that's for your your final challenge or whatever, right? I mean, he makes the replicas for that. So, yep. I mean, I, I can see he's probably getting some reprieve because he's getting to make something. So, I, but I can imagine someone that, that likes to be in a shop kind of losing their mind being on a set for nine months. So, yeah. well, I, I was, I mean, I used to, you know, on, on dark days, days we weren't shooting, I'd go on that and I had this whole thing like making knives on set. I'd, you know, make something on set and sell it. Uh, but with the COVID thing now, it's like, <laughs> it's everything's so strict. It's like, no, no, you can't go in the shop. You can't go near the building. And it's like, oh, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's, there's a lot of phone calls to my wife going, I can't take it. I'm going to jump off 19th floor. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, no, it'll be okay. It'll only be a couple more weeks. She's got, she, she's literally talking me down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you just gotta you just gotta invent some type of sure. self-contained induction based forge so you don't have sure. the flames you can do it in the fucking room it's a nuclear forge nuclear yeah. forge yeah a little atom <laughs> atom yeah atom i'm sure the forge. neighbors wouldn't notice anything <laughs> right <laughs> you know it's funny you guys are talking about the humility um that jay has like dude i'm 40 years old and if we blew up i'd be the fucking most pretentious diva i know in you would world. <laughs> i know you would i completely i know you do would you, do you know who you're talking to right now i know exactly who i'm, I'm, talking the, I'm to. the guy that makes the dick jokes all right that's who i am <laughs> guys seriously i was i was you know thankful you guys asked me to be on here I was like oh, yeah sure definitely oh. i was trying to juggle things around so we could do this 
Yeah, no, I, we were joking. I was like, I don't know why the fuck he wants to come on, but I'm glad he does. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're thankful to have you on here. So, <laughs> yeah. so. No, uh, but no, have- no, I'm, 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 I'm very thankful for all the the stuff that's going on and all that stuff. But you know, like I tell everybody, I'm just, I'm just normal guy. I, I get pretentious about this crap. Yeah. yeah, like I said, as far as I'm concerned, it's you know, it's a great show. I'm glad it inspires people. I'm glad people yeah. like it. I'm glad families watch it together. I've, I've had so many messages and emails from parents telling me, oh my God, thank you so much. I'm actually sending weekends with my kids in the backyard or in the garage making knives as opposed to them just sitting on video games and never seeing them. Right. And yeah, yeah that, that kind of shit just blows my mind. It's just, it's, that's cool. You know, I got two kids of my own. Yeah, I know how it is, you know, with kids, especially when they're teenagers. And the fact that, you know, at least one time a week, the whole family sit down watching some stupid show that I involved in. That's great. It it just blows my mind. Yeah. Well, I I guess to me, too, though, like in his position, like I think it's awesome. Like I would be super pretentious about my knife making, but not the the show that I was on. I'm like, oh, yeah, the show's cool. Whatever. It's like, but God damn it. My knives are fucking way better than yours. So, you know, eat a dick like that would be. um, But I'm a I'm an insecure, shitty person. Maybe that's why you're not successful. (laughs) (laughs) No, yeah, I I can't imagine having young kids now. Like all my kids are, are grown. They're all adults. And so I can't imagine having a young kid now. With, they they with punch people in the butthole. That's they, that's, that's what they, that's they, what they, they, do. they do. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's just yeah. fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, uh, whatever. Right, I've so never a, had I mean, anybody ask me to do that to them. <laughs> I I actually punched my seventeen year old in the butt. <laughs> in the butt. He was going some stairs, man. I just fucking got him right there. If you could have just waited one more year, you wouldn't get arrested for that. <laughs> Walk up the stairs a little faster, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> all right i know you're ready for a second well no what i was going to say is um jay we usually take a break for about 10 minutes right about now um if you have the time we'd love for you to stick around and and, and hang out but if you've got to go we totally get it it's entirely up to you my friend i'm cool okay so we usually take about uh like i said about about 10 minutes um i will mute you know cover the screen and, and all that shit and uh like i said we'll be we'll be right back because i smoke no, and no, i'm like no worries i'm jones, I'm jones at this point. Yeah. All right. That'll work. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. We'd like to take a minute to tell you about a really cool podcasting app called Stitcher Premium. Yeah. Stitcher Premium is, uh, like you said, a free app, and they've got everything you could look for true crime, comedy, pop culture, the office ladies. Uh, I think Conan O'Brien's podcast is on there. There's there's lots of things on there. And archives of all those things. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and, smart lists. Uh, yeah, the smart lists. That's what I was about to say, you fuck. <laughs> smart lists uh, basically will watch what you're listening to, or say watch, listen to what you're listening to, right. use some fancy algorithms, and make recommendations on shit that you already like. Yeah, so if you go to stitcher.com slash premium and use the code B3F, you can get a month free. So it's four ninety nine a month or th- uh, thirty four ninety nine if you pay for a full year, but use the code B the number three F and you'll get a free month. Check it out, Mister J Nielsen. And if you're just tuning in, this is a very uh, NSFW podcast. We curse a if fuck ton. Us. If you're just joining us, people yeah. might. We don't know. Right, right. Hey, he's back with the fucking mask. <laughs> <laughs> that is moderately horrifying, sir. <laughs> It's gonna get scarier. <laughs> oh man! So, are you a sports fan, Jay? What's that? Are you a sports fan? No, no. I Ooh. grew up when I was a kid. I grew up uh, being a a Mets and Jets fan, and that okay. basically killed it for him. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then that that. Takes out the next question. I don't have to ask the no, next question. I was going to say then. cheers to that because I am not a sports fan as well. I mean, I enjoy the local minor league hockey team, but sure. otherwise, I don't. I don't follow the sports ball right at all. I got you. Yeah, all right. Uh, I yeah. like our local hockey team, the Elmira Jackals, up by us. Yeah. Uh, but it's not because I care about hockey. It's just fun watching guys beat the hell out of while you drink beer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now I like. It's been fun for me to take the kids to because about the yeah. passes and I take them, and my my son loves that shit so much, and my daughter loves to fight so. 
it's it's been fun. But um, it, it's I don't like mean, ask somebody who watches NASCAR. Oh, why do you watch NASCAR? It's not for the turns; it's for the crashes. <laughs> Nobody admits <laughs> it though. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's it's funny, like you know, being from I, I spent a short amount of time in Pennsylvania. Um, well, I say a short amount, it was like three or four months, but I was in fucking Allentown and I hated it so much. I hated Allentown. <laughs> Allentown, it, you might as well be in Philadelphia. It's just steady. <laughs> yeah, just well, the there's the city. Thing, and right next door to it, there's some bar. I can't remember the name of it. It's some shitty little like I took a kid, he was from California that was out there. I was there for training for when I was working for uh Lutron lighting shit, but yeah, he was um He'd never been to anything but microbreweries. He was from fucking Northern California. I was like, no, I'm taking you to this shitty ass dive bar. Like this is, this is happening. And like, I befriended a, a very large lady named Peaches. That was she, cause she could have been, she had to have been like 65 years old, a like huge, her husband was this big dude that worked for one of the local factories and shit. Cool as how this dude was scared shitless the whole time we were in there. He's like, dude, I think we're going to get stabbed. I was like, nah, man, just don't be a dick. It's fine. <laughs> but uh, that was that was the best time I had in Allentown was me and Peaches. Yeah, basically, just keep your mouth shut. You'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's the, you know, the big thing. It's like, hey, man, just go. Just be respectful, and uh, you'll be you'll be fine. Yeah. Well, uh, it, well you know, it, it depends on where you're in Pennsylvania, though. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of, like, I mean, like in Allentown, you might as well be in Philadelphia and stuff like that. Where I live... Yeah, everybody's got gun ranges in their backyard. So yeah, well, we, we both worry about in, anything. We both yeah. grew up in really small southern towns. Like yeah. I was in Fayetteville, Tennessee, Pulaski, Tennessee, which they still have Klan rallies. Where uh, in the town? No, not anymore. Go. We don't let them rally anymore. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but up and up until recently, up until the last, not, you know, not publicly. No, they used to let. They I grew up. Square, I grew up with, with Klan rallies on the square in downtown Pulaski, like legitimately clan rallies there and awful and some people would go and cheer them on and support and some people would go and protest and which side were your parents on my parents didn't my parents stayed away from downtown right. i think they wanted to keep everyone guessing so. <laughs> well if you guys didn't guess my parents are black so oh, okay well my wife is so there we go I'm fucking joking. Are you kidding me? I, I knew you were, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, I'm old, about as white as you got. my oldest son uh, is works our cameras here for us. Um, he was a, a video production major, and and I think we we had some guests on one night, and they were like, well, "So who's your son? Like, let him come over on on camera or whatever." And <laughs> change change to this other camera, gave and then come here, and and, and so he. Came, it was a very funny thing. He goes over and they're like, "Oh, <laughs> it, was very, it was very funny." <laughs> but, then, but then they said he was hot. No, so they did say he was out. hot, but it was still very funny to see the look on their face. Like, I don't know what to say at this point. <laughs> I'm very progressive. He's hot. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Well, yeah, yeah. So, I tell people all the time on the show because you know it, normally we have an earbud in our ear. You know, like so if yeah. somebody. And, you know, Trailer Town wants to, you know, have it say something or acknowledge something or something like that. You know, and I'm, I'm sitting there looking off the space and talking and the contestants are looking at me like, what the hell's wrong with Jay now? And I was like, <laughs> oh, no, sorry. It's, you know, the voices in my head, but they speak yeah. Spanish. I have no idea what the fuck talking about. <laughs> I, I do. I do love the, the heavy pun uh, episodes that happen from oh, time yeah. to time. Yeah. So many puns. Oh, my God. Bad, bad puns. <laughs> oh god uh, the first time that oh my god that boat episode i, I actually got up and walked off the set that was yeah. not staged at all i <laughs> remember that stage i just walked i i can't take it anymore and we we had one recently where the puns started flying and i'm like i'm gonna fucking walk <laughs> like, i know i know where you guys are going with this i'm gonna fucking walk baker was like i didn't start it i didn't say you started it but i'm gonna walk <laughs> oh, Mar oh my god mark hyda seems to be a big, big fan of the puns between oh, yeah. that and his instagram feed it's 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 a constant flow of, of puns oh god well the funniest thing is i mean everybody all times is oh doug mark hyda is like the most dangerous guy in set yeah he probably is but he's also the goofiest <laughs> he's the yeah. one that makes all the bad dad jokes he makes mm -hmm. a lot of you know, puns during the testing and stuff like that I mean, every episode is like, you know, at least once we're doing like, oh my God, he really said that. <laughs> yeah. Well, his Instagram but, page but Doug, Doug makes crazy. it look cool, though. Yeah, absolutely. 
Well, it's it's interesting because to be like a, a dangerous guy, if you were to ever get in a fight with Doug, um, like he has some of the strangest things where he's swinging around fake lightsabers and these <laughs> dreamer he a, things. He's he got whatever. one of those lightsabers. Yeah, that's fine. But I don't I, I don't remember seeing any videos on his Instagram of him playing with a light, like oh, they're, sling, they're, slinging a, like like Doug's got this choreographed thing going on with the lights. I, I actually was playing with my lighter last night and I almost broke the lamp on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, the neighbor, neighbors across the way are probably like, what the fuck is that guy doing? <laughs> oh, God. So wh what do you when you're not making knives and you're not filming? Like, what do you what do you do for fun? Like uh, go to the Caribbean, go to the uh, Caribbean or go to Hawaii or something like that. Yeah. Um, my first marriage, I never had any fun. Uh, yep. All I did was work. Uh, my uh, when I got married to Becky. Um, I realized that you could actually go to different places, and enjoy yourself. So yeah, we, we go on vacation, stuff like that. A lot of times Caribbean, um, you know, we've gone up to Maine, Arizona. Uh, we did Canada, um, Hawaii a couple of times, you know, just, you know, traveling, just seeing things. I mean, you know, you get to a point, you know, man, I'm 51 now. So you get to a point, it's like, okay, I want to see some shit. I yeah. want to go enjoy some shit. You know, even if it's just, you know, like going to uh, Cozumel and hanging out in the balcony of your hotel room and, you know, the, the people at the bar across the street are coming over and flagging you down in the parking lot saying, hey, come on, come on, let's go party. <laughs> hey, cool. I like this. It's different. Yeah, the so, opposite of you know, my You don't get a lot of that in Pennsylvania, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll say my my first wife was the other. She liked to travel, but she took all the fucking fun out of it. So, no. like, I just I never wanted to, <laughs> travel. to travel without you. <laughs> yeah. Wait, how'd she take all the fun out? Of oh, she was just miserable to fucking be around all the time. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I remember that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now I was I was stationed in Hawaii for uh, a few years. I fucking I miss it like all the time. I miss the ocean. I miss the beach. Like it's it was so good. Like Tennessee, we don't we have a lake. A couple lakes. Yeah, we have we have some lakes. We don't have fucking right beaches. No, you're right. We don't. But I will say though, like, there's nothing like a tropical place like Hawaii to make you feel really shitty about your body all the time. <laughs> like, it didn't matter how much I worked out, there were going to be people that were hey, always. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, it didn't matter how much how much I worked out. I was never going to be that fucking tan ass motherfucker yeah. that was. Right. Yeah, I, I, I come off this TV show. Everybody thinks I'm some kind of it took me fifty years to become a badass, apparently. <laughs> uh, and and yeah, then I walk on the beach in Hawaii and it's like you look like a badass. <laughs> they look like a fat old fuck. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. No, that I was, get it. That was the good thing about being in Alaska so much though, because I never had to fucking take clothes off. Just all the time I was bundled up in this fight. Right. Yeah. Oh, it, oh, the only thing you do in Alaska is ad loading. You can never take it off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was stationed. I was around Nome for a while, and um, yeah. the, the saying was always, "There's a there's a hot woman behind every tree," because there are no fucking trees in Nome. <laughs> 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 oh God! Oh, that's yeah. funny. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, then, then you have what they call the Alaskan scale. So, what would be like? And this is super whatever. Sure. What would you have like, you know, your dude oh, this, skill. Would, this is going to be rude about women rating, right? Yeah. So, so I'm going to go apologize for that now, but you'd be like, okay, so she's a four in the mainland, but in sure. Al Alaska, that's a fucking nine. <laughs> 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 Easy. <laughs> oh God. It's like, it's like, God, yeah, what is it? Like one woman of like nine, nine or 10 guys up there. It's, cr it's crazy. Yeah. 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 I was married the second time when I was up there. That's why I went back, actually, the second time. <laughs> so you know, that, that's, that's, again, you know, it's like Pennsylvania. That's why you go with the walruses instead of the seals. You got something to hold on to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I didn't, uh, make, I didn't make these rules up. It's just, it's no, no, I get it. I get no, it. I lucked out. My, my third, it's, it's been going for longer than my first two combined. Yeah. And she's fucking still hot. And, you know, we get along. She likes me, which is... I don't know how. I don't it, it either. It amazes me that I'm still married. No, That's I've known the nothing. hard thing to find one that actually likes you. Right. Especially, yeah. I'm, like, I'm, a, I'm a fucking asshole and for the most part, a piece of shit. Yeah. But she still likes me and hangs around. Like, I, I don't Which know. Which is I'm, crazy. Like, I've known you longer than most 
than I've known anyone else, yeah. honestly. And I don't even like you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is why we need to promote sick women. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We need to do a pledge drive or some bullshit. We got to do something. <laughs> Promote sick women. I'm tired oh. of be total in, you know, chicks. It's just yeah. like, eh. I, I, I like to think at this point it's just Stockholm syndrome. You <laughs> haven't been married long enough, though, this time around for her to, to not like you yet. It's been almost 10. We're like nine years. No, I get up. it. But we've I've been married a little over 21 Dude. years. Hold on a minute. But, but my wife loves me, but she does not like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that. Your wife there doesn't is, like there me. There is a distinction, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Actually, the only like, time I'm I ever put up with you because of this, this, and this, but yeah. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't gonna blow you. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true. <laughs> that's why that's why you have me hanging around. <laughs> that's true. That, <laughs> is, yeah. that just went in a weird thing, circle there. <laughs> you you didn't know what you were coming in for, Jay. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> what, what was actually going on during that smoke break? <laughs> it was smoking, but uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. But my goddamn jaws are tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. <laughs> oh, that normally tired. <laughs> it was <laughs> only on Saturdays. Oh my good. god, you had to riot. <laughs> it was going so well up until now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're, we're in the third quarter here, and things are going <laughs> shit. <laughs> like a Packers game. Just oh yeah, that it works on more levels than one. Yeah. You had no idea what you were getting into when you came on here, did you? Oh, well, trust me, we we do worse on the set. There there is one nope. sound guy on the set that every time doesn't matter if we see each other, or not we're just giving each other the finger. It's just a normal thing. I mean, I gave him, I, I I sent him the middle finger of my Freddy Claus. Yeah. yeah. Even even if we're not shooting, I'll send them a, a text message giving them a finger. My wife will do it too. It's just you know, there's just the people on set are just fun. We just have fun with each other. And God, we've been. Uh, it's amazing to me because you know it, we got camera, sound, lighting people, and they're still on this show because they want. Yeah. Oh, I wow. mean, because I've asked them several times, like, how the hell do you guys make a living? Because, you know, they're, I mean, they're always scrambling for jobs, scrambling for work. And there's, you know, they could go, you know, you know, once in a while you get somebody who goes to a different show or, you know, a different job or something like that. But most of the people that are shooting it, lighting it, doing sound and stuff like that have been there from the beginning just because they really enjoy the show. And it's, it's actually kind of like family yeah. group. And it's, it's, it's weird because I'm not used to that kind of thing. I'm used to working in my shop by myself and, yeah. you know, not having to deal with, you know, anybody, but you know, then there's the occasionally it's, it's awesome just to walk up to somebody and say, Hey, Eric, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And well, that, we do that, that, that daily. That actually yeah. speaks a lot for the, the just the culture and then the, sure. the atmosphere of the show for sure. Um, because like your son, the guy that's doing our cameras, he does he works in film editing and yeah, you know, he does he doesn't love his job that much. No, <laughs> I don't think so. No, <laughs> no, it's great. I mean, I was just talking, we just finished an episode, um, and the, the head camera guy, he just yeah, you know, we were talking for a minute and he was like, This is the best episode ever. <laughs> and eight seasons this is the best episode ever and i can't I, i'm sorry i can't talk about it but it was just like yeah that's cool this is, this is, you know, just just take from me this is right down my alley here yeah, but, nice. uh, yeah it's cool and yeah and you know the fact that we're in eight seasons in and people are still excited about yeah. it the people that are working yeah. on it, they're still excited that's that's got to be something right there because i get bored as shit <laughs> well, I mean, the fact that you got us, there's a season on Netflix. You got most of the seasons on Hulu. I mean, you got to be getting now some, uh, shit. I've completely blanked on the word. What's the word called? Syndication. Syndication. You got, I mean, there's what well, they call it mailbox money. I mean, you guys, <laughs> that, that doesn't affect me at all. And then that no, does it not. that's, that's, that's that. interesting that, 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 that does it. You don't, you don't benefit from that, but yeah. Oh, no, no, no. We got, we got roped in dumb and young. We, uh, when, when this first started, I mean, yeah, 
I'm a knife back. I make knives sure. for a living. I don't know anything yeah. about TV. Geez, I wish I'd known. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you you got to pull I'd a probably, I, I, I probably would have had more than a fucking broken down 13 Subaru that I'm driving <laughs> around <laughs> Yeah, you got to pull yeah, a yeah. bell and go on stage I somewhere. I didn't know any better. I signed the contract. You know? so, yeah. But, uh, yeah, like I said, it's good promotion. But, uh, no, no it, it's cool. It, it's, it, like I said, it's the fact that the crew is so excited about the show amazes yeah, yeah. me. Because at this point in time, you'd think it'd be like, ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, and I'm, there's got to be those moments. Like you said, you have, when you have downtime and you're sitting around, you're like, Jesus Christ, I just want to go the fuck home or do yeah. something, you know, but that's par for the course. Oh, my God. I, I just, the last week, I binge watched The Mandalorian both <laughs> seasons in two days. Yeah. There was so well, much downtime. I was just sitting around <laughs> watching Star Wars. It's like, okay, uh, at least I'm getting paid for it. Cool. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That. So, when when you guys are in between shooting, as far as like you know, I'm I'm assuming you're in a hotel right now. I'm assuming it's because you guys are on your shooting schedule. But what what kind of rules do you guys have as far as COVID protocols? I mean, can you can you guys hang out during while at night when you're not filming anything? I mean, we don't want to. Oh, that's, okay, that's fair. <laughs> nah, All right, nah, we, we spend enough time during the day together. We don't need to <laughs> hang out at night. Uh, no, we, we we can we we do on occasion. Um, yeah. It, yeah, a lot more before the COVID crap. Um, you know, before COVID, uh, you know, we used to. Um, it was so much more fun on set because we used to be able to, you know, chit chat, walk around the set, you know, talk to the camera mm -hmm. folks, talk to the, talk to everybody. You know, it was so much more freedom. Now we're in all like our little pods. You know, you got to stay together, and you know, you got yeah. you know. You know, PA following you around, making sure you know, you're not going too far. You know, it's like, you know, I'm not in kindergarten anymore. For Christ's sake, I'm 51 goddamn years old. I don't need some of these 13 old fucking following me around, telling me what to do. But, uh, you know, we're trying to make the best of it. You know, I sure. mean, it could be a lot worse because there was, oh God, there was hundreds of shows that were canceled. Yeah. Because of COVID. Because um, yeah. they they couldn't meet the restrictions or they couldn't get the personnel and stuff like that, and we've had several delays. You know, you know, certain times contestants, you know, test didn't come out pop, you know, did, didn't come out right, right, or there was you know all the flight restrictions. Now sometimes the contestant missed the flight, so we we've had some you know some uh, delays and stuff like that. But no, everybody's hung strong and everybody's you know, kept working hard at it. And, you know, we're still actually rolling actually a lot better than I thought we were going to. How often are they testing you guys? Or if you can oh, say. Oh, God. Twice a week. Okay. That's not, I, I expected more. So, yeah. All right. Actually, actually, it's really sad. Um, the, yeah, the love of my life, the, the, the crazy woman that keeps me insane. Um, She's been a nurse for over 30 years. She does anesthesia in the operating room. They never get tested. Yeah. And I'm on this goofy little TV show and I get tested twice a week. What's wrong with <laughs> that? Seriously? Right, right. Yeah. It's I mean, funny. She, she, she was just talking to somebody yesterday about trying to get the vaccination. And it's like, oh, yeah, well, we only do that like twice a month, and you have to come over here. And it's like, yeah. she's like, she's like, bitch, I'm in the fucking hospital right here. Why can't right. you come give me the shot here? <laughs> right. But <laughs> not, apparently they can't do that. Cause it's stupid. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, I'm, not, it's, I'm, not, I'm not doing the COVID vaccine until I'm done shooting because I know yeah. uh, as soon as I get it, I'll get COVID. <laughs> I've, never, I've, I've, I've never gotten a flu until I got a flu flu shot. Anytime I get a flu shot, I get a flu. I That's guarantee. Funny. I get a COVID shot. I'm getting fucking COVID. I'm going to be on a goddamn respirator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting my first shot Monday. Oh, really? I am. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah. You're fucking bowing to the man. You no, sheeple. no. Here, here. <laughs> this, so this is what I was telling people. No, no, no. The first shot. First shot's fine. Wait right. For the so second, second one. So he, here's why I, I decided to go ahead and do it. Aside from from my wife was 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 uh 
directed by her doctor not to take the shot yet. Right. And um, all of you know the health things that she's got going on. So that's that plays into it. But it's also like I get to leave work two and a I was half. I say it's it's got to be getting off. I get work. to leave work two and a half hours early twice. <laughs> well, my company just said they'll pay for a day off for you to go get the, yeah. the vaccine. Well, they're not paying for a day off, but they're paying for yeah. the vaccine. See, I have so. to do it with the VA shit. Like we've talked about. Oh, that. sure. But I've got mine set the same day. I have to go. I'm going to go fucking jerk off in a cup and get the uh, the old vasectomy double checked. So oh, it's going to be really. So it's going to be a good day. I'm going to get a shot. And you come feel in like a cup. you need to get that do- double checked. Yo, absolutely. Really? That shit can fucking heal back I mean, together, it can, man. But dude, it's been 10 years. If my wife has a baby now, it's it's bad news for everyone. It's been almost 20 years for me. And, you know, yeah, I'm no just saying, issues. I'm not taking any risks, man. I had I had a dream like a fucking few weeks ago, which I don't put stock in that shit. I usually drink icky blackness <laughs> dream, yeah. but I dreamed that I knocked her ass yeah, up. Totally and gone we, off track. And we, no, we, no, this, and this is par for the course. Like I knocked her up, and she and she had a special baby, and I was like, "Yeah, no, I'm getting this shit checked." <laughs> special baby, special baby, like special baby, special. Like <laughs> you mean <yeah>. misguided? <laughs> it had superpowers. It wasn't like a climb on walls or shit. <laughs> it could. Let's just say it could have lifted cars. <laughs> oh, my God. oh my God. Oh I my. had a joke all set up. I totally forgot about it now. Oh, <laughs> you see what you did? I do. I ruined everything. <laughs> oh, no, no. I just remembered it. Well, it's, it's not as funny now. So you're, you were talking about having kids, having another kid. And I, I was thinking that it's like anal sex. You, know, it, you don't think it's going to be that bad the first time. So you try it a second time. And then you realize how bad it was. And then you don't want to do it again. Like, that's why I don't understand why people have three kids. <laughs> well, you know, some of us don't learn. <laughs> it's well, it's like, I had, like I had a buddy, like I had a buddy of mine say, "Man, the first time I sucked a dick, I was drunk as shit. The second time, I knew I didn't like it." <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is definitely a different podcast than what I'm used to. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we strive for so I'm, thank you very much <laughs> I'm going to get an email from Jay tomorrow that's going to be like dude you can't fucking like release this shit <laughs> oh fuck no I don't care oh, <laughs> now, yeah, are, you, we, are you kidding me I'm the one on set everybody says you know he wasn't born with a filter you know, <laughs> even, even when I'm doing the COVID testing I'm like you know okay can you get a thing out of my asshole now <laughs> <laughs> so being, being a holiday weekend I've got behind our kind of makeshift set here i've got two of my brothers sitting there kind of watching and waiting for us to get done so we go sit outside and drink and whatever and and i've had one of them recently said i love listening to you guys but you guys just cuss way too much (laughs) well specifically me specifically you but both of us like you guys just cuss way too much (laughs) well it was funny because i mean i've done i've done a few podcasts obviously Mm -hmm. and usually it's you know pretty clean cut straightforward and when you guys contacted me and said, oh, yeah, uh, by the way, we're going to be cursing and drinking the whole time. And I'm like, fuck about time. <laughs> oh, good. That makes me feel good. We, uh, we had a uh, uh, minor league hockey player on a few weeks ago. and Great dude. And a great dude. He just recently broke the uh, SPHL record for wins. Um, yep. But uh, he had a great time. And afterwards, he's like, this was great because we didn't talk about hockey the whole time. This was really fun. And then the next morning, he was like, hey, I was thinking about it. I really need you to take this and this and this out of that <laughs> show because I want to promote it. If you leave it in, you can't. I can't promote it for you. And well, like, and, no, be- and because I like we didn't want him to get in trouble. With the sure. Because we usually don't edit anything like whatever we talk about tonight gets fucking released on Monday. Like, yeah, it's, it's not a I don't go through and with that. cut out yeah. breaths and shit like that, but. But he, he. But we we do this thing when we were thinking about doing it tonight. We call yeah. it the, we call it the bag of shit, and it's just a paper bag. We have guests who just write topics. We throw shit in there, and we just draw things out at, at random, and um and just whatever comes up is what we talk about. But um I think we had like puppet porn that came out and some other shit. And he was like, guys, I can't I can't have this out there. Like I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on my wife is listening or not. <laughs> i know my wife doesn't here's the most that she listens whatever she hears while we're here doing this is yeah. what she, 
Now, my, my wife. I'm in, I'm, I'm in the apartment. I'm not doing anything. I swear to God, honey. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> now, my, my, my wife will text me from time to time. She'll be like, oh, I caught a chunk. It's going, it's going good. I like it. Yeah, but she no, won't. My wife. No. No, not my wife. She hears us. She goes, you sound like you guys are having fun. You're laughing a lot. You're being very loud while I was trying to go to sleep. And I heard Steven say, I hate that. I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. So we, so we record in my, I have a, a bar room and things like, like pool table and shit in my basement. So we set up our recording area here and my wife is like above in one room over and she can hear everything that's yep. going on in here. And she not always happy which recording in his basement makes it super awesome for like you know in-person guests that's, that's like, not me yeah. at all <laughs> <laughs> all all we need is one of those fucking gloves when people it. walk in <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and a swing we need knock, to put a swing knock, knock. yeah <laughs> i'm sorry i can't play with the damn thing like i said i've wanted one of these things since i was like 12 years old no it's it fun. is legitimately amazing i would carefully jerk off with it if i had one. <laughs> It, it's funny, actually. The first couple of days, I was, I was like walking around, seeing what I could pick up safely. It was like, yeah. no, you can't put your headphones on because you just get your eyeballs out. <laughs> but yeah, you even customize it. It's got the yeah. The, oh, nice. Nails and knives on it and everything. That's, that's amazing. The, that's... Actually, put forge, forge and fire on the blade. Yeah, well, that's cool. cool Sorry. Shit. I well, no, that's no. I, I dude, I would, I would it's never. A, it's, a, it's a long gone teenage boner on my hands right now. I would, <laughs> I would work that into every conversation that I was having. Oh my yes. god, we just did. We well, you guys will see. Never mind, I can't talk about. It, but yeah, you'll see him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. And, oh. And, and Doug and I are working on trying to build some kind of channel thing doug's more into this kind of thing than i am but yeah we're we're gonna do like you know try to build this thing where we could do like you know podcasts like you guys do in interviews and tips and tricks and he's gonna do his collie martial arts stuff and stuff like that so it's something we're working on that would immediately be more useful than anything that we do. Oh, like absolutely. right off the bat. Like he's telling me this. I'm like, I'd watch that. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't watch this ever. <laughs> well, firstly, after, after this interview, the first thing I'm going to do is invite you guys to fucking interview us. Oh, <laughs> we're in done and we're done, in. <laughs> done and done. But yeah. We, we're going to reach out to Doug. <laughs> no, Doug's, Doug's hilarious. Oh my God. Everybody, like I said, everybody thinks he's the most dangerous guy on the show. And he probably is. But he's also the funniest guy on the show. He's like he's like comic relief. He he comes up with all the stupid jokes, and a lot of times they're so stupid they're funny. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, you know, like I'm a horror movie nut. But even the bad horror movies are like comedy to me. Yeah, sure. And sometimes you know even the dumbest jokes Doug comes up with are just <laughs> funny because it's him. Yeah. It's funny. My yeah. my wife just commented that Nightmare on Elm Street was the first scary movie she saw, and she was scared of the dark till she was thirty. <laughs> that is. <laughs> what? 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 You want to loan your glove? <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> what? What did you think of the Nightmare on Elm Street remake? Actually, okay with it. It wasn't that bad. I didn't like the Freddy Krueger character as much as Robert Englund, sure. obviously. Robert England uh, was no. creepy as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the cool thing about the glove I have because that guy has been making Robert England's gloves for 20 plus years. Yeah. Yeah. But the remake, I liked it. I liked it better than the Halloween remake. Oh, yeah. The Halloween remake was rough. So, now, yeah, what did you think? Like, I mean, I, 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 I like Rob Zombie and all that, but. Eh, yeah. Little what did you too think? much, a little too much involvement about his, you know, wife. Yeah, being yeah. the uh, main character. I could do without the dreadlocks. What did you what did you yeah. think about the more recent Halloween that had Jamie Lee Curtis and and you know the kind of staying with this original thing? Uh if Jamie Lee Curtis is in it, I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> I I even watched a bad fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger movie with her. I can't remember the name <laughs> of it. Cliff, cliffhangers no, at the true, one. True lies. No, true lies. True lies. True lies. Yeah. True lies. Yeah. True lies. I mean that, no, that was a was horrible good. movie. I love. I love Schwarzenegger. I love Jamie Lee Curtis. Horrible movie. Don't yeah. care. I'd watch her in anything. 
I'm pretty sure that True Lies was written by Quentin Tarantino. Really? Oh I'm God. pretty sure. I, I don't even like girls with hair, but yeah, <laughs> she's hot. She's hot. <laughs> not you, you Sigourney record- Weaver hot. Not Sigourney Weaver hot, but she's hot. You do you record all of the uh, yogurt commercials that Jamie Lee Curtis does? So you can go back and watch. It. <laughs> no, I just I just felt it in my belly. There you go. All right. <laughs> I want to be best friends with Jay. No. I'll just let, tell you what. Let me let me like let's start our own podcast. Fuck Joey, and then we'll it's just, we'll just do it. <laughs> you do that every week. <laughs> the fuck Joey podcast. That's yeah. right. You go you go to Jay's house. He's like, I got a couple goats out here. This is Jamie, Lee, and Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, trust me. Where I live, I'm sure we can find somebody named Curtis. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. Two are use. One's a ram. <laughs> Roll the dice. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's actually one motorcycle bar. I'm sure we can find whatever name you want. <laughs> Helmet a, or no, it's your call. Right. This, this is all just fucking <laughs> Leave it up, take it off. Up to you. Depends on how much you want to spend. Oh, oh god, god damn. This sounds like an uneasy rider. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh easy god. rider. <laughs> Oh, you guys are some sick suckers, and I like you. Yeah, thank you. That's the, that's the nicest thing anyone said to me in a while. Right? I, th- I thought it was you talking about the jaws hurting, but no, that's actually him. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Uh, you guys, God help you to take another smoke break. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're, we're, we're we, sh- we usually do the one, and then. Yeah, that's I'm, it. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Because okay, I'm going to start wondering. It's like, oh, God, how much. Come to stomach handle. Well, well, this. I don't ask Rod Stewart. (laughs) You'd be surprised. Well, this is why we sit across from each other with a big table in between because you know we we can't see. You got to remember when I was when I was growing up when I first started actually like working. I used to listen to Howard Stern every morning. Yeah, yeah. So you can imagine where my you know my humor level goes. (laughs) See, for us down here, we I was a huge Howard Stern fan when I was a kid. Yeah, I, I love Howard Stern, but we didn't get Howard Stern down here in the South. We got Bob and Tom. That's who we had to listen to for Dirty Radio. And, pre, and pre-FCC. Yeah. yeah, pre-FCC, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, I loved Howard Stern. Used to watch yeah, him when... Um, my, dad, my dad had a six sense of humor, too, so I was screwed from the beginning. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's interesting. Both yeah. of my parents... I, I, I offended more women than I actually got to date, so... <laughs> Well, uh, both my parents are pretty staunchly conservative Christian, and they're—I mean—they're not married, but yeah. you know, so they're going to hell for that. But still, <laughs> <laughs> well, one, like, one, oh, what, what, yeah, okay. Now my wife is not married, right? Yeah, that's well, different. My, well, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was just gonna say my mom listened recently to an episode of the oh, podcast. Oh shit! Yeah. Really? Yeah, and I found this out last night. My sister told me. <laughs> my sister told me that my mom had listened. My I don't know that my dad even knows I do a podcast. It's crazy. I'm 40 years old and I'm still like not don't telling my my siblings like please don't tell dad that I do a podcast. I really yeah, don't, don't know. Mom and dad, I did this. Like, I, I told my mom I did it because what I say whatever about my mom, but my, I found out my mom listened, and she told my sister, I don't know why he says some of those awful things. He says he must be lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like yeah, I guess so. Maybe I am. My my <laughs> sister got super offended by something I said, and she let my eighty year old like Southern Baptist grandmother listen to an episode, and it was a huge, huge, terrible thing with my family. Yeah. It was fantastic. I don't know the. the for me, the biggest thing is I hope my daughter doesn't listen. <laughs> that's the biggest thing. I want to have her on as a guest. That, that's fine with me, but whatever. I'm just expecting my wife to smack me in the head next time I see her. She's like, <laughs> what the fuck were you thinking, dumbass? <laughs> <sighs> oh, God. Like, do you realize you do have children and child support and all that crap? What the hell? <laughs> smack again. What the hell were you thinking? I still, uh, I still have fucking uh, what eight years of child support. Yeah. Oh my god, I'll be so glad when that shit's done. 
all my kids are all my kids are over 18. Yeah. Like I, I, you know, I, I happily pay because I want them to be taken yeah, care of. Yeah. Yeah, back back so a little more, more motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I told my wife when, when as soon on my daughter's 18th birthday, I said, ah, oh, you can't get me for shit now. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully you've got a fucking vasectomy or something. I do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Dude. I, Cause I was, we were, when we were getting divorced, I was still stationed. I was still in the military and, um, I was getting medically discharged at the time, so I couldn't come back for shit. So I absolutely got reamed in the divorce shit. Like yeah. I got reamed. It was, <laughs> I'm still paying for that. Like nine years later. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. I'm still paying for my first 15 years. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. I yeah. think my second, but, my second, but fortunately I found a woman second time, I think other 12 years. And like I said, now I know what vacations are and, <laughs> I actually know what Caribbean I almost look like. So right, yeah. My my um, wife is is very understanding and puts up with a lot of shit that we have to deal with. So I'm I'm grateful for right. that. But anyway, do you have do you have a favorite Caribbean island to to travel to, or any place specific, or what's on the bucket list? Uh, Carousel is my current favorite. <clears throat> I've been to a bunch of them, uh, but yeah, there's this place, Landmark Hotel. It's just awesome. I mean, we walked in, it was just me and my wife. And they said, okay, here's your room. And I expected a hotel room. And I walked in and there was like a full kitchen, this huge living room area, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a balcony. And my God, the balcony was like 20, 25 foot long. Looking over the ocean, like, I like it here. <laughs> this is cool. This this was the place I was talking earlier. It's like you know, me and my wife are just hanging out in the balcony, having a couple of drinks, and you know, this uh, the money bar is right across the street, and you can actually just go there, eat, and just like walk right into the water and go snorkeling and nice. see crazy fish and stuff like that. And it, it's a beautiful place. And I kept telling my wife, like, how much can we get one of these rooms for? because <laughs> it's like condo you you can actually like buy an apartment there like okay right, this might be cool. this is really <laughs> cool do you, do you have any yeah, bucket Cos list? Cosmel Mexico was, was is definitely one of my favorite places yeah other than that it would be Hawaii yeah uh, where in Hawaii have you been like I was on Oahu for like fucking almost four years and I didn't get to go to any on my honeymoon I got to go to Kauai for my first marriage but it was a fucking nightmare the entire time but so otherwise, I was on Oahu for three years. Yeah. Well, the first time we went to Maui, um, because you know, that's when me and my wife first got together, and she was a you know nurse anesthetist, and she had to do a conference. And she said, hey, um, I got to go on a conference. Do you want to go to Cleveland or Maui? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it. It took me longer to comprehend the question than to respond because I was like, my brain like locked up. Like, the <laughs> fuck do you think? <laughs> but but now we want to go to Maui. <laughs> so we went there. It was awesome. Um, and then a few years later, we went back and we went to uh, Kona. We went to the Big Island. Went to Kona. Uh, oh. I got to hang out at uh, Neil Kamamura's shop. He was one of our Forge Fire champions. Um, we hung out, made night and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, we drove around the island and stuff like that. It was super cool. Nice. But, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's, that's, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that way you work your ass off when you're young so you can enjoy stuff when you're yeah. older. And, you know, the poor bastards that are just slogging away, I mean, you know, I feel bad because, like, you want to do something. You want to go see something. Yeah. yeah. Do something with your life. I didn't do that. And my like 15 years of marriage, I didn't do a goddamn thing. Yeah. And I so regret that. And that's right. why I appreciate the fact that, you know, you know, my, you know, being with Becky, you know, she's introduced me to the fact that, Hey, you can actually go places and do stuff and see shit. Don't ask. 
And that's exactly <laughs> the way she'd put it too. Dumbass. <laughs> well, when, when and, you enjoy yeah. the company too, it makes a huge, huge difference, oh, yeah. right? Like when you actually can enjoy the place that you're, you're at with the person you're with, it makes all the difference in the world. Oh yeah. I love it. I'm not sure about Becky, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Sometimes I'm thinking she's like, why the fuck did I bring this asshole? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like we've like Amanda and I have been married now coming up on nine be nine years, but um she's still from she's gotten to the point now that if I make certain jokes, she's just like, Oh <laughs> and I'm like, What did you used to think that'd be funny? She's like, No, I never thought it was funny. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> or, or you get that look they the roll her eyes, like I've heard this a hundred goddamn times. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She's yeah. like, like and I have I have the worst fucking memory ever. And she's like, You've told me this like 30 times by now. Like I, it's it's I can't act interested anymore. Well uh, my yeah, wife yeah, has def- definitely been there. <laughs> my wife doesn't have the same sense of humor that my kids oh, and I no. have. Like my this is one thing I'll I'll say. Like not not to say that I was a great dad, but my kids have a right, right, great right, right. you you might you might be borderlining for it right now, depending on what you're about to say. No, I'm saying my my, my kids my, <laughs> I like it so much. No. My kids have great sense of have a great sense of humor. All three of the kids. Yeah, like, you just said your wife doesn't. She doesn't have the you're same a fucking red line, buddy. No, no, I, no, no. Okay, let me step in real quick because because we've been friends for you know twenty odd years. Yeah, your wife has a terrible sense of humor. <laughs> she just doesn't find I'll the same. It, I'll, I'll say yeah. it for him. She does it. Like my kids have this a great. Is, this is getting any better. No, I just <laughs> what? It's, I know my wife's not listening. So your wife. I thought, I thought I was stepping in inappropriately for a minute there, but apparently not. No, <laughs> your wife hates me and loves me all at the same. I know time. it's it's a strange thing. Yeah. Yes, yeah, but no. But, but my kids have a great sense of humor, but they are very hard on the, on each other. Like oh, yeah. they really are hard on each other. Well, so. shit, your daughter told me I was like the fat, creepy uncle the other <laughs> no, day. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's. Yeah. Well, they'll, all, they'll all three be here tomorrow, and it's it's crazy because they're all nineteen and older. Yeah, and they're uh, we're they're hunting Easter eggs here. Tomorrow. Oh Jesus! Like Christ. Krista, Krista said, "We're gonna hunt Easter eggs." So you guys are gonna hunt Easter eggs tomorrow. So I was like, "All right, fine, you're hunting Easter eggs." So I told, I told the boys who their their girlfriends are coming over. I, I don't know if, if Matthews is or not, but regardless. And I said, "Just tell them if they're coming over, they have to hunt Easter eggs this <laughs> week. Like they don't get to come and watch. Like these 22, 23, 24 year old people. If you're coming to my house, and you're gonna eat the terrible. you're gonna eat the food that I cook. You have to. Hunt That's Easter why eggs I never tomorrow. come to your house ever except Saturday nights." <laughs> Seriously, grab you grab them, they shock you, put them in oh, the yeah. eggs, and make <laughs> and make the that's teenagers really hunt Easter eggs too. Just watch <laughs> them go. <laughs> that's, that's actually a good idea. I wish I'd thought of. It. Uh, yeah. See, I should no, I, I should have written for the small movies. I seriously should have. <laughs> God, you think the stuff that happens on Forge of Fire is bad? That's nothing. <laughs> oh god do you do you test any of your own blades with any of that same stuff i mean i'm assuming oh, i'm yeah. assuming I, I actually i think that's how i got the job because i mean if if you go uh, my instagram uh got hacked a couple years ago so that's i mean it's only a couple of years but if you look at my youtube or uh, not youtube uh yeah, YouTube is really good. <laughs> but yeah, if you look back, I, I've been doing the, the same kind of testing for years and years. Yeah. I mean, I've been beating the living shit on my own knives forever. Um, I tell the contestants to, you know, that little bit of time that we get to talk to them before they start, um, I basically tell them, I was like, look, you know, hey, I feel for you, but. I don't got a lot of sympathy because I've done this yeah. shit to my own knives forever. And yeah. I've done, I mean, I've made test knives, pre-test knives for the show for years. So they've taken my knives and beaten the living shit out of them. Like I said earlier, you know, there, there's tons of stuff that I've beaten the hell of my own knives that never made on the show because it was just too fucking brutal. But <laughs> on the plus side, I could say, I've only broken one of my own knives over the years. Nice. nice. We had one guy just say that he's seen the ponytail videos. 
<laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that ended when my son was old enough to ride on my back playing horsey and decided <laughs> my ponytail was a fucking rain. That ended that shit right away. <laughs> like now well, it's done. I'm not doing this shit anymore. At least yeah. he wasn't giving you the thousand years of death. <laughs> oh my god. It feels like it though. <laughs> but yeah, it was amazing. It was like so freeing. It's like, oh my god, this is so easy to take care of. I could take like a bar of soap at a fucking truck stop and fucking wash my hair. No problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it it is so so much easier. So if if someone were gonna were starting to get into bladesmithing, what would you recommend the first like style knife for them to make like what's a great beginner knife to try to make uh well a lot of people start off with a rear wood spike knife uh -huh. um, you know it's it's not a great steel but it's a doable steel and you know common to get a hold of stuff like that um but what i would suggest is to check out the dvds uh, that i did because uh, they were actually made for people just starting out who have no clue whatsoever. Um, the biggest reason was because of the TV show. You know, I'm because I've been teaching knife making. I've been doing demonstrations and teaching you know, classes for years. But with the TV show, there was such an explosion of people like, you know, just out of the blue in their backyard. I want to make knives, so I do it. So I made a series of DVDs. You know, especially the first two were just totally geared to, you know, light the forge to sharpening the, the edge of your knife being done. So, I mean, that's one of the first, I mean, I know it's kind of self-promotional, but, you know, they, I, I okay. Uh, can, Neil, 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 Neil Kimura, I'm talking about Hawaii. Neil Kimura is one of our forge fire champions. He came on the show. And he said, I didn't know anything about knife making. I watched Jay's DVDs and won. Yeah. yeah. It's like, no, oh, oh shit. That's great, great goddamn commercial. <laughs> Thank you very <laughs> much. It's like, damn, I didn't expect that. But yeah, that's cool. So, so the fact that I've been able to take what I think is the basic knowledge I have, because I don't think I'm any fucking knife guru or anything like that. And it's helped somebody else and neil is like a rock star in knife making now i mean he's he's got his own channel um he's got you know several things going on stuff like that and the fact that i can think that i have a part in helping him or other knife makers achieve you know something they didn't think they could that's just cool that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So actually just made me think of this. So other than yourself, obviously, like who, who do you think are the top blade makers in the States right now? Oh, uh, well, in definitely your, in Burt your... Foster. Definitely okay. Burt Foster. He kicked my ass. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's a huge dude, by the way. Like he looks very like. Burt is huge. Burt's a very tall guy. And like I said, he, he had the first time I met him. I didn't even know who he was. He walked up on us and yeah. I, I looked at him and I was like, who's this big kid? And then I saw his, you know, look on his knives. I was like, oh, fuck, for Foster. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I knew his work. I just never had met him. Um, but yeah, work is huge. Oh, God. There's, um, well, geez, I just ordered a set of knives from another maker, John Nagel. Okay. Uh, he's he's one of our Forge Fire champions. Uh, my wife wanted a, a kitchen knife set, and I was going to try to surprise her. But how the heck am I going to surprise her <laughs> when she's right there? So I talked to my buddy John. I said, "Hey, do me a favor." So I ordered a set of kitchen knives from him, yeah. and they're beautiful. He did fantastic. You know, we picked out everything. I sent him the hand of material my wife had, and uh, you know he just finished that, sent it to us, and she killed death. So yeah, John Nagel's uh, is definitely one of my favorites right now. All right, 
I know, cause I was just just curious because I sure. don't know shit other than a little bit. I I know shit all about blade making and the yeah. people, and and I'm assuming it's like any other community. You have your rock stars of sure. the of the of the uh, of the community of, of the world, and that doesn't mean there's no other amazing fucking artists in the world, but there's just a few that are you know more known than others. Yeah. I'm always interested to see the people in the community like who they sure. respect and, and who they like. Cause well, it's you know, funny. The guy that got me started forging, uh, Keith mm-hmm. Bagley, he's actually a full-time ferry in Maryland. Uh, I met him like God, 10 years ago, at mm-hmm. least, you know, it's been a small Pennsylvania, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, knife show. And I was in even forging at that point. I was just, you know, grandma stock removal. And he basically, and I've told this story forever, but he basically came over, looked at my stuff, took tea on me, and <laughs> said, hey, you know, you want to come down to my shop for a weekend? Welcome. So I did. I went down there for a weekend. It was like three days total, probably two and a half days. And he taught me the basics of forging and the basics of uh, forge welding. So I walked away from that with, you know, a bar of metal and a bar of like cable Damascus. And I just went from there. I, I had this, you know, cheap piece of shit hand crank grinder and a, a four inch square bar of steel stuck in a you know, five gallon bucket of sand. And that was my anvil. And it, I didn't care. It was snowing outside. I didn't care. I drug it out from the shop and I started beating a piece of steel. And it just kind of went from there. Nice. I, I wish I had something that I've been that passionate about. <laughs> like, I mean, I had music for a while, right. but it was never, I don't know. But it wasn't until I was older, right? So it had to take backseat to being responsible right. for shit. Like, I wish I would have started doing this shit. Like, we started when we were young, but I didn't take it serious when we were sure young and then by the time i did it was just fucking too late <laughs> right. no, I, get it, yeah. I don't know i mean like that's well, it, it, the, res- the responsible part is the difference because at that point in time i didn't have any kids or anything like that like, yeah okay, right yeah and it was just a hobby at that point too right you know, and then eventually you know a few years later it was like okay people are actually asked for this shit maybe i can do this part-time and work part-time yeah and then a few years later, I was like, okay, I think I'm making enough money. I think I can actually do this for a living and not work yeah. for anybody else, which was a total goal because I, I hate people. I, I hate fucking working for anybody else. Same. Um, I, I, I've, had, I've had so many jobs over the years just because I couldn't keep my mouth shut. Yeah. Yeah, it's not just a TV show. I'm like that normally. I, just, <laughs> I, I have no problem expressing my opinion, whether you want to hear it or not. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, you know, it's fun. I've jumped like this is the job I have now. The company I work for is the first time, probably in fucking you know what, thirty five years or thirty five, about twenty five years of working that I've ever actually enjoyed a job, and I still would rather do other things obviously sure. but like i actually appreciate the company and the work isn't bad and it's it's kind of weird but um you know it's still like had i i wish sometimes i would have focused on the thing that i love when i was younger before i had all this shit and you know built that skill set sure. because you know there's just no no time to do it but then yeah. again it, it, I, it, it, you're one of the people you plan it or you fall into it i was one of those fall into it people i had no clue i mean yeah. i i was not career motivated mm-hmm. um basically i was a fuck up yeah i was a fuck up in high school i was the kid that was walking around with the fucking you know, long hair two or three earrings leather jacket with the chains going across you know engineer boots and all that shit and you know, i was the fuck up that was just you know i get by you know i yeah. drive a forklift security guard 10 bar you know, I worked for the Navy for several years, just loading explosives, which was the fucking worst job you could have given me. <laughs> Good God. I still remember, I still remember cracking open the cases for the Tomahawk missiles, trying to read the fucking manuals, trying to figure them out. It's like, I don't know why we're even doing it. We're just fucking bored. But yeah, yeah, all kinds of crazy shit. I mean, I had a tons, tons of crazy jobs. But, you know, they weren't going to get me anywhere. And I right. just, luckily, knife making just 
luckily fell into my lap and became a thing. It was a plan. (laughs) Definitely wasn't a plan. (laughs) No, that's, I mean, that's pretty awesome. Like I wasted like the first 10 years of my modern adulthood with some bullshit. And then I found the coast guard and that kind of set me on the path I'm on now, but it was like, you wasted the first 10 years of my modern adulthood. (laughs) So you found the coast guard. That's true. (laughs) But I mean, but that's just set me on the path to be able to make money to support the family. I wasted the first 15 years of mine with first wife. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well i was yeah. we were at heavily, we played music together in the, yeah and yeah. i was heavily involved in the church for a while and that's what uh yeah. did the first marriage thing and all that and then that just all fucking went to shit and so you know it, it you know regrouping and went to there but sometimes I'm like man sure. i mean granted i wouldn't be where i am now we wouldn't be sitting in this fucking shitty ass rate basement and sure. you know chit chit chatting if it wasn't for <laughs> sure <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But you know, I was, I was just I was just thinking a couple things. You said rate basement, rate basement. I was like, okay, that's better than what I had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you yeah, know, but it, it it's, it's worked out in the long run. I don't run. care where rings and freeze as long as I got my plastic Jesus right now. I'm dead with my car. <laughs> <laughs> I go uh, hundred miles an hour as long as I got the almighty power laying out there. <laughs> Sunday night. <laughs> oh God, old man. Yeah, that was that was pre Howard Stern. That was Don Imus. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, Don Imus. <laughs> Woo. So yeah, the way Jay described. Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> you're not that much older than us. <laughs> so <laughs> the way uh, Jay it looks, it looks pretty. And Grady, our new host on the show, the other day was bitching. Oh, I got gray hair. I'm like, bitch, you don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> right, he's, yeah, he's gray, got a, like continue. a little touch of gray right here, right. The, right around the ears. Not even over the ears yet. It's like fuck you, you yeah. don't know well, shit you, yet. Well, you're a hammer swinging silver fox, so you know. <laughs> there you go. I'm I'm pretty sure there's some forest of fire fan fiction out there somewhere. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw some of that. I didn't read it, but I'm pretty I, sure I, I, saw I, I think I think this is the first time in this podcast I'm actually insulted. <laughs> and then Jay took Doug lovingly into his arms. There's, 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 there's no silk box going on, trust me. Oh God. <laughs> oh Jesus oh, Christ. Good. Gold. Just just when we think we couldn't get any lower. I know. I know. Yeah, um, you had to fu- fucking invite me. <laughs> you're you're welcome sir no no oh man well sir i'll, I'll expect my crown of mail this week <laughs> well if, if you if 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 at the end of 2021 you win guest of the year you will get a trophy we have our own super shitty award show and you'll have to give me a p.o box to mail it to so that way we don't end up like you know in you know in jail so no, we, right. we don't we don't do p.o boxes where i am at that, that's just you know, inviting a bomb <laughs> yeah the, the mail carriers are fucking tough where i am i wouldn't i would not fight with our mail carrier god she'd kick the shit out of me <laughs> oh god oh. damn it tradesman bravo it's like sir fucking, it's like fucking you know, brutal bodyguards it's like mma fucking mail yeah. <laughs> he's well, gonna I'm... fight fucking rednecks shotguns and fucking dogs <laughs> so uh you got a fan here. Jordan Amber Branton says, even with gray hair, you're still hot. <laughs> we we concur, Jordan. Well, it's, I will say it is what, a female. What, what on he the- thinks is hot is just my blood pressure kicking up. That's why I'm looking at <laughs> it. Something's yeah, hot. I gotta, it ain't just I gotta take a pill. <laughs> <laughs> I've been taking those recreationally for years. <laughs> Oh, um, okay. I tried those. I got them in Mexico. They didn't do shit. Pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> the money. Don't buy fucking blue pills in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Love the vacation. Uh, they built up the bullshit too much. It, yeah. it, 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 will, it will not help you meet the length parameters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The parameters were shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh god well I need you to leave we, please get the floor storage floor <laughs> <laughs> sir, oh god sir school's about to let out would you please move along <laughs> oh god oh. They, couldn't, they couldn't let schools out when we were out. oh my god that'd be terrible you know, J- when jay just we have crazy people on that show 
<laughs> I, I love our contestants, but some of them are just like, uh, seriously? How did you get them? All here? right. Uh, I, now you, <laughs> you've you, sparked like, create, another. Did you like crate them up and fucking ship them? <laughs> so you've sparked another question, and this is something that I've seen online. That it was rumored that you guys had a neo Nazi on the show at one point, and that they at made one him. Point? Well, they made. They, well, hold on. <laughs> well, they the the what I read said that they made him keep his neck covered because he had some Nazi tattoos. We uh, will actually. Will was great at spotting this um, because apparently I have no idea about this. I'm, I'm just used to you know regular KKK people themselves. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, but yeah, apparently there's all kinds of like shoelaces and haircuts yeah. and shirt types or you know the weight I, I don't know all this shit but will was great at pointing this shit out and he he was the first one that pointed out like um oh, man we got like a neo-nazi here what what, <laughs> what do you mean and you know he pointed out a couple things and we looked it up and it's like oh shit he's right <laughs> so yeah we've had a few we have a few we, we're uh we we're noticing the uh signs yeah. Earlier now, because <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, sure. And I thought he just looked like a big asshole. But <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea he hated, you know, Jews and blacks and stuff like that. But, but uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They're they're a little more careful about that now. Um, yeah, I would imagine so. Not totally great because you know every once in a while they slip by. But you know, yeah, they t- tend to hide things. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, just like, you know, we've had other contestants that are trying to hide sexual things about themselves. Yeah. Sure. Um, you know, Joey's been hiding you catch it, Sometimes you don't. Right. But I'm on the casting department, so it's not my job. So I don't, <laughs> right. Your, I just, your job I just, is just to break shit. My job is to point it out and say, hey, look at that motherfucker. <laughs> 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 oh, so. I, as as we wind down, you brought something up, and I've had multiple people ask this question. Oh God damn it! Really? No, I got, but I, but I'm not doing my good uh, I job. Am circumcised, oh. yeah. <laughs> there you go. I that's ten bucks. I'm not. I'm not doing my job as a, a host if I don't ask this Jesus question that people Christ. ask me. This. Why um, is Will not around anymore? And maybe you don't know. I, I don't, now I I won't answer that. Um, oh, that's fine. The only thing I say is Will. Um, I I miss Will. Love yeah. the guy to death. Love his family. Um, he's a great person. Um, I wish he was still around. No knocks to Grady at all. Grady's doing oh. a great job. Sure, but, absolutely. Yeah. Any anybody ask me you know, about Will? Talk to Will. Yeah, I, I I get it, but I had multiple people want ask ask me to ask that question. And oh no, I I totally understand that because I get people ask me that at least once a week. You gave you gave the answer that I expected, and I'm perfectly fine with that. So, yeah, I'm breaking so. up with you after this episode. I don't give a shit. God damn it. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> you're both dead to me. <laughs> don't don't roll me into him man i thought we had something here and you're fucking throwing me with this asshole no well it all depends on what you do on smoke break buddy <laughs> oh god so when jay described himself in high school he sounded like jay was a bit of a punk like he was into some punk rock maybe so with a leather oh. jacket and chains on it and so 80s metal bitch 80s, 80s metal, metal. Still, still, right. listen to, still listen still iron maiden priest okay Ozzy, Black Sabbath, all that shit. I'm still into that. I it was funny. We had a really fucking warm day. I was able to, you know, crank the windows down, and I was given those beatbox, that blasting car motherfuckers a ride for their money with some goddamn Iron Maiden blasted fucking <laughs> as high as my goddamn thirteen super would do. <laughs> that's awesome oh god you're looking yeah. something up on your phone you oh, i was something. just pulling his website up so you, i had it okay. correctly yeah. all right 
if they don't know. You have mountain mountain, mountain hollow dot net, right? Is your is your site for uh, your website yeah. for your yeah. shit? Yeah, because the uh, the original shop was actually in a mountain hollow. It was yeah. you know up and it was only about twenty minutes from where I, I am now, but it was up on top of the mountain and you know the property kind of sunk down, so it was a mountain hollow. So that's why I named it. And everybody said, "Well, you should have named it Jay Nielsen Forge." It's like, eh, everybody does that. Yeah. And then when I started making knives, I realized, oh, oh, everybody told me, oh, you're putting your logo on the wrong side of the knife. <laughs> I didn't have anybody tell me what fucking side I was supposed to put on. So I'm not going <laughs> to change it now. Fuck you. I'm going to stay there. Oh, that's awesome. No, but I mean, if you go to sites, mountainhollow.net, these some sure. of the most fucking gorgeous knives I've ever absolutely. seen. Like, they're yeah. absolutely yeah. stunning. Like, I would be scared to touch them, actually. Yeah. I wouldn't want to get, like, fingerprints well, and shit. The, yeah. the, the only thing I'd like to say about those is everything I make is fully functional. Yeah. yeah. Nothing is decorative. You know, everything. Yeah. It doesn't matter, you know, how many layers of Damascus or what the handle material is. Everything is meant to be freaking used. Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah, want to I'm put just... it on a wall, you want to put it in a safe, you want to put it in a drawer, that's your business. But everything's meant to be used. I don't make sure. any fake shit. Yeah. And, and I, I've wanted a, a custom knife for a long time. I just can't afford what it costs. To, because <laughs> but they're worth it, though. It's absolutely worth it. The money. If, if, you, if you promote Mountain Hollow Knives more, maybe we can work them out. That, look, that, that that's what Jude, we swapped. Jude with. wants those goddamn ninja stars. Man. That's what we swapped with 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 uh, Spicy Mike. Asked us to come film something. The Mascus ninja stars. <laughs> Spicy Mike, when you know when he asked us if we'd come film something for his website, that that that's our trade off. Is like we're gonna make a knife with him while we're there, whenever that ends up being, and that's that's a cool thing. Like because that would be interesting. I just don't. I don't have the time to buy all the equipment and try to yeah. do it myself. I'm officiating but, a wedding in a couple of months. So yeah, you're the, right. Yeah. Yeah. So hey, well, if yeah. somebody if, wants you, to if you get a if you get a chance, go to Spike in my Spike Spice and Mike shop. Uh, yeah. he's a good guy. He's very talented. I'm sure you yeah. fucking have a great time. And he can drink so much fucking vodka. I was <laughs> amazed when he was on the show. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't yeah. know about that. Yeah, he he was drinking Keystone and vodka, and Stephen tried to keep up with him. It didn't end well. He I, had to I stay in my rear that night. Keystone basement. and vodka. Yeah, he was the hell of vodka. Yes. So, <laughs> well, my friend, I think Damn. it's about we're gonna start wrapping up. Um, Do you have anything you want to plug before we go? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> All right. Well, do you mind hanging on for just a minute so we can chat with you for after we go offline? Sure. Cool. Well, Jay, man, we really, really fucking appreciate you being on. We've had like a great goddamn time. Sure. Like, we're, you're we welcome have, anytime. Been great. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's been fun as hell. I enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, so next week, Sean Eli, right? Something like that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> I mean, you guys probably aren't used to having somebody ramble up. Oh, I'm going to do this and this and this and plan on this and this and this. Fuck no. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Cool. I don't give a shit. <laughs> All right. Well, th well, thanks everybody from watching. Well, Forged in Fire. If you want to see Jay in action yeah. on on the show, uh, is weeknights at uh, I don't remember the time, but it's Wednesday nights. Yeah. Um, and then he's got he's got his uh, nine. Go nine. Nine. There yeah. you go. Nine Eastern. MountainHollow.net for his uh, yep. sexy ass fucking knives. Yeah. Yep. Um, but Sean Eli next week. Most importantly, b3fpodcast.com. <laughs> yeah, b3fpodcast. <laughs> no, leave us a review. Somebody left oh, us shit. a one star review, and oh, what the hell is that? Oh, it's a knife I got to take home and test. Oh, oh nice. nice. Yeah, what? I, I I made it before COVID. I was going to beat the living shit out of it. And my wife told me to wait because just in case something bad happened, I don't want to be in a hospital at that point in time. Ah, so, yeah. so I'm taking this home in a couple of weeks and I'm going to beat the living crap out of it. Nice. Well, so now you've sparked another question. <laughs> what is your go-to carry knife? Uh, whatever I felt like making the week before. Oh, okay. In basically, that, yeah, like there's, there's, yeah, there, there's no, uh, you know, basically, yeah, it's just, you know, like I said, with the bulb and mask of stuff, it's like, eh, I got an idea. Let me try this. Yeah. And yeah. then I'll carry that for a couple of months and sell it and, get a buck in my ass to do some else so you know, <laughs> it's a like rotating that. cycle but yeah nice yeah i got i have no set thing that this is my favorite 
this is what I'm going to do. You know, I, I, I experienced so many people like that when I first started making knives, like, this is my thing. This is what I do. It's like, that's fucking boring. Yeah. It it really, if if you look at, if you do look at my website, there are tons of pictures of all kinds of different stuff because I get bored easily. I don't want to fucking do the same thing over and over again. Sure. That's one of the reasons that I don't do batches of knives, which a yeah. lot of people do. And I totally understand that. It makes sense. You know, business wise, you're going to make batches. You'll do 30 or 40 blades, heat treat them, get them done, put different handles on them, sell them. Great. Happy. Boring. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I like do I like do different stuff. I learned this when I was like, God, I was like 13 years old. I got grounded for something really, really bad for the whole summer. And uh, you remember you used to be able to go to the mall and buy those like tin figures, yeah, like monster goblins and shit like that. Yeah. Well, I was not able to go anywhere for a whole summer, so I decided I was going to paint my own chest set. Uh, by the time I got to the third fucking elf, I was going to shoot myself in the head if I had a gun. <laughs> I don't like doing repetitive work, so that's why I don't make knives yeah. that way. I, I make them as you know, orders come in or as I see fit. That's awesome. Yeah. I think my most treasured knife is one I, I, I found a sweet folding knife in the floor of a pilot bathroom. And I kept, <laughs> kept that shit for like four years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so if, if you guys want to wait one second, I'll show you a piece of history here. Yeah, absolutely. This is the knife I carried on my school bus <laughs> <laughs> in grade school. Oh, butterfly knife. Oh, oh shit. wow. That's this amazing. Fucker. I was in grade school. I carried this, and you could tell how old it is by the fact that I don't know if you can see it. Oh that yeah, ninja we, motherfucker has no knees. One. <laughs> That's awesome. It, it was sharpened so many times that little motherfucker doesn't have knees anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That was back I mean, when you could carry a knife in school. Sure. I don't think I've owned anything for that long. No. Like my and that dad was in New Jersey. That wasn't even fucking Pennsylvania. That was in New Jersey. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh god. Well, Jay, man, we we appreciate your time yeah. so much, man. Thank you for taking the time to chat. This with has us been tonight. great, honestly. No, I had fun, guys. I appreciate. It. I, I'm happy to do it again sometime. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And if uh, you don't mind, hold on for one second. Um. Like I was saying earlier, Sean Eli next week and yep. fucking Jim Beam Apple. Is that what yeah, you Yeah, it's going to suck. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Ugh. All right. Um, until next time. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Give us a thumbs up on Facebook at B3F Podcast. Follow us on Twitter at B3F Podcast and on Instagram at B3F underscore podcast. Send us your questions or comments to bfff.podcast at gmail.com. Rate us and review us wherever you listen to the show. And as always, thanks for listening.